Okay, so we're back. We're going to be doing some, I guess, leveling across a couple of different characters. But I think first and foremost, we're going to do some RT. I think Dango still wants the parasitic gene flow. We can try to get one for Dango. We'll see what happens. <laughs> Hashtag do it for Dango. I guess we could also try other yellow ID quests. I guess we could we could talk about maybe we'll do a little sampling of yellow ID quests. So we'll start off with some RT, maybe we'll do an endless into the other quests help they've had mentioned earlier to me off stream. Just to showcase we have some options, I suppose. Just making sure I don't have anguish on. Man, if this Cannon Rouge was A beast and at hit percentage, I would be so happy. <laughs> but I showcased some green runs. Yeah, we could probably do that after this. I mean, I think green ID is just... What do I normally do with green ID? That's a good question. I mean, other than TTF, which is fantastic. Uh, da, 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 da. Parameter's gonna watch our stream? Sure thing in Parameter. Yeah, I was gonna say episode 4 to some extent. They technically have episode 2 quests, but I don't play them super often. They're just like, they're, they're like okay, but they're not like... You're not gonna do like an RT with them, for example. Yeah. The thing is, is like they do get like V502 for miracles. So you could try to hunt specifically miracles if you wanted. There is there is a episode two quest where you start off with the early miracles. I'm sure Hellcleave knows what I'm talking about. There's like five miracles in the beginning of the quest, and you just reset. It's in like control tower, I wanna say. Or not control tower. Uh where is it control tower? Control room. What do they call that area that's Scal Griffin? <laughs> I don't even remember. I'm so rarely there. It's not tower. It could be control tower. It's one you don't normally warp to. You have to complete the three areas and then go to central control area, maybe? CCA, I think. It's not a place I go to very often, I'll put it that way. There's a couple quests that drop you off there, but it is what it is. Is there anybody else looking to hop in? I just wanted to clarify. We have Murphy and Hellcleave. So yeah, other than the Miracle resets, I can't think of anything they do in Episode 2 offhand. Yeah. It just, I so rarely talk about CCA, because, like, it's Episode 2, I don't like it. <laughs> just, like, it's just one of those things. Their, their tower is abysmal. Since they only get uh, Flame Garment, Asuka, and Heart of items. Sure, um, not exactly gonna help you clear anything. Okay, I'm assuming it's just us. We'll proceed. But yeah, we could do some green ID. So let, let's do a little bit of green ID, we'll do a little bit of yellow ID. So yellow ID is... Kind of, kind of tricky to play, I would say. They don't have like a lot of really common runs. Like this is probably the most common one they're gonna have, which is respective tomorrow. So having a character that has strong boss clear potential is really good here. The other thing yellow is probably best known for are mines. Their yellow mines in episode one are really strong. So it's mostly just about picking the right kind of quest for yellow. There's a couple that can be done. Some have faded a little bit in popularity due to the changes in some of the drop rates for things from like the Sinnohs. And generally speaking, most IDs can be done by playing a cookie in some of the respective areas that we talked about. Rip the music apparently. So from our perspective, this is probably the most focused run. It doesn't have necessarily the best overall spread of rares, but it is something you can do. 
So, like, Galatine definitely, I think, elevates the runs since Galatine is buffed on the Affinia server. But otherwise, I think Blue ID is pretty competitive, and it also gives some V501s and some Jaya chances, all of which would potentially help you with the clear. Yellow ID gets a couple of niche uber rares, technically, as you do the run. So we'll see that from Del Saber, for example, which I believe has Lavis Cannon at the current time of the video. So there's a couple like one ofs where like technically it's in the run, but you're not really going to run the run for it. Funny enough, we did see that there was a uh, add slot as the box rares, which we do kill some boxes in Temple. So if you kill the ones in the room when we're in the tight corridors and we're fighting the three Gorons, we're always pausing to fix the music. Uh, towards the bottom right or extreme corner of the area from the start. Uh, that will give you potentially some ad slot chances. It's actually surprising how much, uh, oops, surprising how much you could get out of the barriers on yellow ID. Like most, for example, uh, boxes in the early episode two give red barrier. So, like, for example, if I'm Temple Beta, it will give Red Barrier. If I'm in Jungle, I'll get something good. So, generally speaking, their box rares are actually semi-decent in Episode 2, surprisingly. But that could be said about a couple different IDs. So we'll focus predominantly on main items. I just figured that was worth mentioning in general. Just to make sure to check some of the box rares. You'll be surprised what you get. Generally speaking, if Barrier is attainable, great. Disco Brave Man, great. Sometimes you'll get ones that potentially get 13 or Crimson Coat. Those are situationally good if you don't have those. 13 being more valuable. Yeah, unfortunately, one thing that kind of holds Yellow ID back at the time of the video, I'm going to state that because you never know, they could update it later, is that they don't have access to Red Ring. So even though they have like a really solid Mines, and even to some extent their Forest is actually decent, uh, they just don't really have like what would be considered some of the end game runs. So while I do like them, they do have their flaws. So it's important that you pick a character that potentially can either do RT or potentially could do mines very well. And I think casts are pretty strong in both roles, since being able to shut down Barans with Freeze or being able to confuse the Sinnohs or shut down them with Freeze Traps, for example, is a pretty strong choice, I would say, for Yellow ID, since a lot of their focus will be there. It doesn't hurt to have Freeze Traps in RT, but it's not mandatory. It's not like we're doing tower or fighting barrels where it's like you either frozen shoot or freeze trap or die. Like we're not we're not playing that ride or die game <laughs> with this character. But just be wary that there's a lot of bosses that are just kind of annoying for Hunter to deal with. So honestly, I'm kind of a, of the opinion I like broadcast the most on this ID. Just to have the utility of being able to take some of the stuff out easily. We'll go in the corner here and then aim diagonally. So we're just looking for the orange thing to spawn. We'll try to shoot a little early. So we're going to get another chance to hit the orange thing before it hits a player. I think I got it there. And we're going to go to the other side. We'll take a little damage there. We're immune to poison. Pass benefit. So if I aim correctly, I can stop the orange thing from hitting. I shot a little early. And that's the last I have to really care about that. Now back to power shouting the Barbara. And you can see, like, as a hunter, I could maybe get some Dark Flow hits. I could get some Diska here. But honestly, Bazooka is just so damn good. <laughs> like, I have a zero hit, zero A beast. That boss got deleted. Seriously. It's ridiculous. So we have a decent chance of getting Ad Slaughter Red Barrier or something here. Assuming that they have the Temple Beta drops here. Okay, time for the lineup Olympics. Okay, so we're gonna look at the little ridge here. Elk Cleave is pretty close. Might be slightly too far over. Ooh, I feel like that's a bad angle. We'll try again. Lineup Olympics time. No, I don't like my angle. Really don't like my angle. Game, please. I got a few more seconds to correct it. It's a little better. 
This might be slightly too far over. I think this is as good as I'm gonna get it before time is up, as it were. Let's see how close I am to center on this warp. Oh, is it actually dead perfect? Damn, I shouldn't have doubted. <laughs> there you go, chat. There's there's the experience in RT. Can you line up on the raft to escape faster? Save those frames. Well, anyway, Cannon Rouge is also useful while going through here in general, which is why, I, even though I think Q-Cast would also potentially be very good, um, I just feel like being able to do something like this to instantly kill those is just more useful in like an overall run compared to the other things. Broadcast, of course, also has higher accuracy in case you do want to do some of the hell-oriented runs, which benefit a little bit in this. I'm not going to use hell, I think, in this particular run of RT, since I just prefer not to. Yeah, even things like freeze traps there to help the team while we hit the switch. Just kind of useful. Yeah, we'll do one double check at the yellow ID stuff and then we'll uh, figure stuff out. I love doing that freeze trap there. It's so satisfying. Ironically, I think if they split, we get better rares. <laughs> I believe that was something we looked up earlier. I don't remember it's Hadoom or whatever the other one is gives it. It's not worth waiting for, but if you're really bored, <laughs> you could go for whatever that Uber is. It's not recommended. Just be aware that there are uh, different rares based off the pan arms. Splitting or not is what I was going to say. It's very silly. Most of the time, you will kill them as pan arms because freeze trap or confuse stop them from uh, unforming, separating into two or two entities. You can hit those robots first if you want XP, but honestly, their XP is so terrible. I give like 30, it's not worth it. So I think when we're doing our wonderful riveting uh <laughs> be slaughter we're gonna look over at yellow id i think yellow id forest i think people sleep on i will state that it has a lot of end game items currently in affinia that would be considered super good off the top of my head the ability to get red handgun and frozen shooter in the same run is pretty strong because red handgun is a core weapon for uh the casts specifically who cast and who can seal in order to function properly. Wow, I actually got Magamid's ability. Chad, I'm not being trolled. What's going on? Normally it's just kind of sad. Oh. I hit him on the way down, at least. So let's talk about their forest rares. They get Frozen Shooter. Technically, hero ability is not a bad one. Storm on Indra is valid. Red Handgun is good. Red Saber. They also got Red Saber. So the Boomas and Barbels, for example, actually drop relevant rares. And the Talos actually drop a Geno 1975. So doing something like a Trell's Ego for uh, Easter Egg, for example, or doing Rescue from Regal is a bad... Well, actually, we'll check their caves. I don't remember their cave rares offhand. Uh, but at least Terrell's Ego, the beginning part, a lot of people do for uh, Hildebearers, is a pretty valid run for them. We'll double check their cave rares as I'm mindlessly killing the geese in just a moment. Then we'll go section by section. But basically anything that gets frozen shooter is a good run, but being able to do that and also get an uber rare and also get common weapons that are good, not a lot of ones have that. That's for yellow ID, the ID we're playing currently. I think people sleep on it. It's actually really good in forest. It just, it could be a little boring to run forest, so I think it's good to know you could do things like RT, which is why we decided to start with this first, because this is probably the most meta of the runs. Then we'll probably do a detour back into episode one. Uh, you can also do a solo quest called uh, A Lost Hope, which features double, double Gal Griffin. Nice level up. Which is actually relevant, but I don't think it's worth splitting up our multiplayer game for that. So we'll put that in honorable mentions. Getting two chances of Galatine, which is a solid rare for this character in RT as well as that quest. Uh, not a bad way to get it, potentially. 
And as I said before, a lot of their box rares are surprisingly good in Episode 2. So most areas, they'll at least get something interesting. The Migat is real. So yeah, this is where if you had like a V5 unit in Hell, this would be strong. Rock has having slightly more accuracy than Hugh has, because we were talking about which one to use before. I think if it was more Episode 1 focused, I'd probably do more uh, Hunter related things. I do think if we're doing Forest specifically, Charge Arm is kind of good. Slicer is also potentially really fatal. I think the downside is just landing the special. Which again, not as difficult when you can freeze trap. Now we're gonna walk backwards a little bit since I know that there's gonna be more geese that spawn. Pick up the tri grinder while we wait. Nice Mahu being found. We'll continue with our rare talk in just a moment. SNS2 for slicers, exactly. I'm gonna scroll the list a little bit. So there are some things they could do in caves, but it's not gonna be like your go-to. So for example, they have Heaven Punisher off of the Crimson Assassins. There are a couple of quests that potentially have a lot of them. Let me just kill that for the team real quick. <laughs> he, he's not facing me, I might as well get the free kill kind of deal. Uh, they also potentially get Sange from Mill Lily. So technically, if you wanted to, you could do like an Uber Hunt in yellow. Red Sword, I think, used to be a little more meta, and it's not a bad weapon as you're starting out, and they get those from... Melqueaks, which are the shark monsters. They also get uh, Caduceus from Slime. Ooh, I'm getting a little slow down there. That's weird. And I think they upgraded one of these split forms. Let me verify. Oh no, the combined version, excuse me, of Pan Arms. Drops a heart of item. So I guess if people are just looking for more things to hunt in general, I guess that's okay. But yeah, their, their true calling is anything in mines. Mines is just ridiculous how many different options they get there. We're not going to go through every possible quest. We'll go through probably some of the more meta ones. We'll try one off meta one. Yeah, Holy Ray from D. Loray is also okay. Rip. The damage is real. But essentially, they get Cure Shot from Dub Chick, which is okay, but they get V101 from Moran's. They get Lame to Argent, which upgrades into Excalibur from Sinnoh Blue. S Red Arm is a very valid item, especially if you're playing Hue Cast or Raw Cast. I think Rock has CDs, but anyway, more valid on Hugh and Hugh for S Red Arms. Also, technically, get the Doug 2000 Bazooka, which is mostly useless. And they also get a surprisingly decent boss drop. So, if you happen to do a quest that leads to Volt Op, they will be able to get a Stink Shield from that. So, not too bad. Tagged him. <laughs> One downside about the raw cast, if you get hit by that tornado, it is almost GG. It does an insane damage when you have too much HP. We'll file that under the many reasons I complain about high HP in this game. Oh, he flew past me. Need to get a good hit on him. I think this will hit better. There we go. Indeed it did. So yeah, pretty much we'll do like one or two mines quests to showcase. The Ruins is actually surprisingly good as well. They get Guardiana from Dark Gunners, they get Bringer's Right Arm from Chaos Bringer, Heavenly Arms from Dark Belra, Cycle 1 Chances from Bulk, and Spread Needles from Merlins or Lodemians, however you want to refer to them as. But sadly, they only get Rico's E-Ring, which stops them from being like a truly endgame powerhouse. Because no, no one cares about Rico's E-Ring, I'm sorry. Item is trash. I wish for those kinds of items, they gave them like either a redeemable passive or like actually a decent stats. Like I don't mind something that potentially is really high evasion 
if it also gave good resistances or something. But like, it just, I don't know. There's a lot of questionable item choices in the game. So yeah, so one, one quest I'll do to kind of take advantage of that is a quest called Endless. Because as you heard me state, there's not really a focus on me getting boss rares. And while TTF does have a couple of bosses, the bosses it does have it does have with the Barbaray and Volt Op, both of those give valid items. And most of the time, no one really gets anything interesting on Dragon, so Dragon's not really considered a loss, honestly. Comparing gets the other IDs. Oops. I'm just shooting the Rico while talking. So I just feel like Endless is just so well suited for it, where they can just potentially recover uh, their traps, which is insanely, insanely good. Or uh, casts and plays very well if you're playing the Hugh cast raw cast into it more so than if you're playing Hugh Mar or Raw Moral necessarily. I still have yet to see any interesting boxes up there. One day, chat. One day. Oh, let me hit the switch. So I'm sitting at 100 meter. We got hit a little on purpose earlier in the boss battle, but uh, yeah. Raw cast also just builds meter like a boss. Like, Cannon Rouge versus the bosses is just so unfair. It might as well just be called meter refill. Because you can see, I don't even have to worry about hitting the buzzsaw at any point. I've, I've been capped since one room after Gal Griffin, essentially. I'll leave team to kill those. We're going to recognize their insta kill works fast, so I could take that opportunity to move further, take advantage of the enemy. Oops, I shot my freeze trap rip. We don't have to kill these, but because it's an event, we'll destroy these for maybe off chance of event eggs or PDs. Otherwise, most of the time we'll just ignore them. So here, Hellcleave has got the twin blaze out. I'll back him up with a frozen shooter here. So we're going to go to the right here. I'm going to stay nearish to the console. I'm going to put down a freeze trap. Froze him before he could do anything. The Kofoe will keep him in place to make it easier to hit the freeze trap. So yeah, just real easy cleanup. No longer getting hit in the face with that. It feels so good. I was trying to find out for the longest time where to stand in that room while not getting hit by it, and that just ended up being the best place. But yeah, as I said before, Yellow ID incidentally has a lot of really strong random enemies that give really good items. So if you end up playing a lot of what would be considered the mini bosses episode one, more often than not, they have really, really, really good items from them. So do not be surprised if you see us playing more endless with this character in particular. He, he is basically the king of episode one endless. I can't think of another character that would be stronger that isn't just like, oh, but you have to red ring like no, 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 no. We finally get to point out a quest where red ring is not in a boss rush quest. And he is so good at it. And again, he gets a whole bunch of Ubers in his thing too. It's not just like one or two. So we've seen before, we've gotten some really strong ones and potentially rolling things like Guardiana with hit. Heavenly Arms is always a useful ability. Being able to Psycho Wand, Ajito, Heaven Punisher all in the same run is kind of crazy. Spread Needle is a very valid item. Chad has seen before, of course. We'll talk about episode two, but as I said before, episode two is kind of their weak set. Which we'll, we'll get a lot of time when we go k kill the boss here. Let me scroll further down. Yeah. I think 3084 is the real flow in sword. Chat can correct me if I'm wrong. They do technically get a chance of that whenever you play temple. For people looking for just rare items in general, the Sigh of a God from the Rare Rappy slash the Love Rappy is nice. So, you know, they, they got some things in Temple. But funny enough, I, I do think they have really solid boxes between getting uh, ad slots just because in Temple and also getting a Red Barrier in Temple Beta. It's one of the few times I will mention the boxes just because it is surprising how much that elevates the run. It is deceptively really good. Otherwise, they don't really have too much to write home about. I guess if you're looking for a god hand from uh, the boss itself, 
So like if you wanted a really good drop uh, machine percent, because you're just looking for kind of like a cheap, slightly easier to use version of Excal slash Galatine on your force, then maybe some Barba Ray runs and RT would be useful. I think Chad has gotten a few on stream before with machine percent as an example. He may knock me down, but my try mate makes sure that it, his efforts were all for naught. And we'll talk about his little, uh, I guess, spaceship bonuses. Let team build some meter. Honestly, aside from Lava's Cabin and Del Saber, it's kind of a wall of nothing. Tripolic Reflector is kind of amusing, and again, if Migium splits, it could become Disco Brave Man. I'm gonna say using twins here. Yeah, don't expect anything too crazy in Spaceship. Uh, they're jungle rares. Nothing to really write home about, sadly. Like, all they have to really look forward to is... Uh, Sinnoh Spiegels for V501 and Gibbles. But you're generally not going to be just running them for that. More importantly, you'll probably just go for the 1 in 64 chance of Galatine on uh, Gal Griffin brings them up a little bit. Technically they have some like really off rares like Spirit Garment is okay. But yeah, nothing too crazy and sadly their tower is also kind of lackluster which we'll get to in just a little bit. Let's go ahead and kill this boss real quick. Oh, I didn't get to land the last charge. It's close. Uh, we're gonna use Heaven Striker. Ooh! That's a little bit of a tickle. Let me Heaven Strike in. There we go. That was definitive. I was like, chat, listen. I had enough of his little dodging and moving around the map tomfoolery. Let me just end him. So, anyway, we'll talk about the next set of rares in a moment. I have to set up for this, sadly. Ultimately, we may, may end up getting Parasitic Gene Flow from this, which would be the big takeaway. But yeah, Dolems give LNK Combat 14, which is not all that great. There are Sync Frames from the Dolem Darls, which are good. They also get Zamba, a pretty solid weapon from Sinozoas. They also get Madame Paracels from... I believe it's Stealth Beater. Let me check in a second. Ah, got scared it was going to do something. Yes, it is from the Del Beaters. Parasitic Gene Flow being the endgame hunter item. And again, sadly from Tower, Ill Gills don't give anything of interest. Del Lily, if you'd like Heart of Items, I guess it's there. And Epsilon gives nothing of interest. So sadly, Episode 2 is kind of, kind of a whiff the later you go into it. But yeah, the RT is fine. I do think Yellow ID Episode 4 got a really huge buff. So if you feel really comfortable running a group with a cast, I think they can pretty much do a lot of underground nonsense and be fine. Like their most notable things are like Dwarf on Eclair gives Cannon Rouge, otherwise it's Black Hound Grace, really solid ones. They're one of the few people with an easy to run Zabuda Photon Filter. If you like Photon Filters to mess with the aesthetics that's there. Uh, they also get Heavenly Powers from Zoo slash Girasol from Pazuzu, which isn't a bad item selection. Their underground is mostly lackluster aside from Goron, uh, until they did some updates. So they changed Gertabulu to now drop Swordsman Lore, for example, which is exciting because that didn't used to exist in Episode 4 at all before. And also they have the infamous combination of Galatine Daylight Scar. So if you're doing a lot of standard Episode 4 boss runs, uh... Or even just doing a uh, pod, whether you're going for the standard boss or Shambered in mixed with Conjuru. Honestly, all their boss drops are amazing. So there's not really a boss I'm upset to see if you're doing that with Yellow ID. So potentially while Rare Week is there, you could in theory get things like Cannon Rouge, a solid Girasol, which some players use. I know I use it to drain health, but sometimes I use it for melee. Uh, change my mind. Let's just hand in the quest. So yeah, let's do a couple episode one quests just to showcase some stuff. Guess we'll do... 
just the beginning part of Tyrell's. And then we'll do an Endless or something, just to showcase a quest. And again, a lot of these will have a lot of overlap with the other IDs. Like, don't get me wrong. Like, Chad was asking about green ID earlier. I don't know if I'd do green ID for randomness, but things like Tyrell's would potentially be usable across multiple IDs. I think green ID is okay at Tyrell's. It gets Frozen Shooter at Red Handgun, for example. But yeah, I do think Rangers just have a fun time here. Forces are not bad here. Marco Hunt, I think is how you say that. Might join for a run or two. Anything I should know before joining? First time playing with others. Well, you are more than welcome to join us. We are on ultimate though, so just make sure you're level 80. Uh, otherwise, yeah, we got a free slot. You're welcome. Uh, we'll generally give directions if there is something special. I will try to say it before we go into those rooms. Things like Terrell's Ego, I'll just explain as we go along, and we'll just talk about the quests as we go through them. But you're more than welcome to join if you have the level requirement. Welcome, Marco. So I guess you can you can let us know how did you find the stream? Did you go on YouTube? Did you look it up on Twitch? So if we go to VR and set it towards the future, the one under it, Terrell's Ego, what a fantastic quest to do during the Easter event. This is going to be like your end-all be-all. This should be one of your off quests that you should really learn how to do because there are a lot of really cool gimmicks and hopefully Murphy will assist with showing some of the other ones. If you have a force, you can trigger Hilda Bears early in several rooms and forces in general can stack Gafoe and basically shut down the entire encounter. So wolves are very weak to Gafoe stacking here and everything is weak to Ranger, because Ranger OP. So, <laughs> I think between the two things there, we should be able to showcase everything we need. So we'll all go into the warp first. So what'll happen is when we come in there, we just need uh, basically Murphy to shut down the Hildebears. We're just gonna shut down the Rappies, and we're gonna not go too far. So he'll probably do some combination of Resond or whatever he wants, and once he's basically checkmates them and we don't go in front of him because of the fact that he's able to freeze them or zap stun lock them he's now able to set up for gafoe so gafoe will basically instantly kill a lot of the moths and you'll also see for example um wolves wolves also can just get deleted so as long as he keeps spamming and we play operation protect murphy we should be good so as a ranger what our role should be keep hilda bears away from him keep Talos away from him. Talos are kind of the more uh, grasshoppery looking ones. Those are the ones he cannot damage at all. So those green ones we see back there, problem. Rappies, not so big of a problem. We can slow them down with freeze traps. So as long as we take care of those two enemy types and we treat our force friend well, force will actually carry pretty well in this. We, we can snipe whatever we need to snipe. Um, I would say as a general courtesy, when there's a small room that is optional, uh, in the upper part that we're about to go to. The force, if given protection, can very easily... Ooh, Custom Ray. Can very easily hit the back wall with an attack. Uh, we see Hellcleave doing the second check I was going to talk about. So there's Hilda Bears in that one room. We don't actually have to kill those Hilda Bears. We just do a quick check to see if anything interesting is there and we'll move on. But if Murphy comes across the far wall, I'm going to try to position visually for people to see. I think it's like right here-ish. If he goes about where I'm standing and he does a Razan, he can actually hit the boxes that are in the upper floor and spawn the hill delts early. And if he does that, we could kill them like a whole room ahead of time, but he has to be like literally against the wall. So he's going to find it with a couple of Razans and he'll just slowly maneuver upwards if he doesn't hit the spot. So there'll be like a very magic spot. There we go. He hit the magic spot. So technically Murphy can now Razan those creatures from where we are and save us time, potentially. It's up to Murphy though. He has to resign though, sadly. <laughs> it's very dumb. So we can check ahead of time if those enemies are worth killing. These enemies don't really need a force for setup. It's sometimes useful if they're here, but we clear pretty fast. So we as forces, or not forces, we as rangers, we're forced to be reckoned with, but we're not forces, will uh, just basically charge arm everything out of existence. Now as a courtesy in multiplayer, one thing I've learned more recently uh, through looking to optimize the quest, is you see how there's a red door a little bit in front of us? I'm looking at it right now with the camera. If one of us leaves a telepipe there, we can actually save a little bit of time clearing the beginning of forest. So I'm gonna go ahead and put it there. So that way when chat is ready, chat will just take my teleporter later. 
and then Murphy will be able to rejoin us since this takes a while. And if he starts stacking Gafoe about where I'm standing, he could basically shut down wolves and also Hildebears. We'll need Murphy probably near the front here. So we don't want to kill too, too quickly, just in case. So we want to make sure he's here for the Hildebear wave. So if he ends up up front, that would be huge for us. I'm going to go ahead and revive Hulkleaf. Not Hulkleaf. So we're going to need him to do a combination of Gafoe, Razan, whatever he wants to stunlock the Hild Elts. The reason that's important to do is a lot of players don't run Cure Shock, even though I do recommend it. So if he is constantly pumping spells, there's basically nothing these creatures can do when they die. It's, it's just that simple. It's very powerful. Protect your Force friend. <laughs> so what we'll end up doing... Uh, I see some materials drop somewhere. I'm assuming it's from the other ones. This is probably the hardest room to not get zapped in. I'm going to let Murphy actually go in first, and maybe he can Razond or Gazond or something. They sometimes walk quickly there, and that causes them to shoot almost instantly. But once you interrupt them once, it's pretty easy to hit them out of it. That This is like the only room I'm scared of if I didn't bring a Soul Atomizer to get out of shock. Otherwise, uh, Murphy is just going to stack a Foey in the middle of the room, and that means all the resulting wolf waves will take somewhere between 50 and 100% of their health, depending on the number of force players we have, and also cover all the Rappies. So let's take a look at their health. They came in at 2300. They're now down to 700. So we as Rangers generally don't have to ever fight the wolves. Just We're, we're just going to assume they're dead. Like, if they're not dead in, like, two fireballs, th maybe we'll go kill them. Yeah, as long as we pay attention to the Hilda Bears and stuff, we should be fine. Now we pop some boxes to the left there, sadly nothing there. Chat can go to the left for additional boxes. It's important one of us hits that switch so we can see that laser gate in front of us opens up. And essentially most of the main force will go to the right. Somebody should protect Murphy since there are Talos in that wave. And that's kind of annoying for forces to deal with. And the reason why I say it's annoying is the fact that uh, while they can spam things like uh, Gafoe and stuff like that, the Talos are just immune to lightning in general, which is a good way to deal average damage to everything. So I actually do like Rezond a lot in this quest over some of the other choices. Uh, but if he's allowed to stack Gafoe, that's probably his best option. Otherwise, after that, I would say it's probably Rezond. Most things take a lot of damage, inc including the Hildebear from it. And now we're going to take advantage of my Telepipe. So if somebody Telepipes now, we can take that Telepipe back to mine. So take the red one. And then uh, we should be good to go. So I do not want to go in first, but I'll stand near it so team can find it. And what that'll do, it saves us a good little bit of a walk. We'll end up facing where we need to go. So that red door I pointed out earlier is nice. Team can stay near the bottom half. I'm going to stay near the top half to deal with the hilt bears. So somebody will be on Murphy guard duty, I think, at all times. <laughs> and then he'll freeze and or lightning and or stun lock. So we don't need to really worry about them ever damaging us. I did pick up a courtesy tribe fluid for Murphy because he has been helping out quite a lot. So I'm going to go ahead and drop that in just a moment. I'm going to drop it on the way to the next room. I'm going to put it right on the corner so Murphy cannot miss that on the way in. Now there are two ways you can deal with the switch over here. There is a trap here, for example. I like to actually sneakily go behind it and never activate the trap. That's my little tech tip <laughs> if you're playing a human character. That trap never triggers if you know what you're doing. The other thing you should do is if you are first in the room, you shouldn't do what I did. You should instead run forward. This will summon more enemies to kill. And given that it is Easter event, even if these enemies don't have really exciting rares, even though, as I just said, uh, three of the common enemies, the Barbels and all the other ones, all give really, really good items on Yellow ID and Rare Hildel gives a uh, Frozen Shooter. Uh, just killing enemies in general is really strong. So one additional thing that can be done by another player if you have a four player group, you can see the door to the north has been open. So I think Hellcleave will go on ahead of us. In fact, he's already done so. And he'll purposely kill every enemy except for the moth fists. The reason for that is that they'll spawn little moth verts, which are the smaller mosquitoes. Which, again, I, they're not moths. They're, I don't know why they call them moths. Um, so in that standpoint, we'll potentially get an upwards bonus of at least three extra moths per nest that is there. And those are your additional chances for Easter egg. So generally speaking, we're just going to keep murdering here since we're in the primary group until we see two Hildelts spawn uh, closer to where Murphy is. They'll, they'll be closer to the wall. So until that point, I'm not leaving this room. That's my visual cue. Do I remember the waves or what is best to do here? Absolutely not. But I do know that double Hildelt means I'm done with the room. <laughs> so we'll put out some courtesy freeze traps. You know, what? It when in doubt, freeze trap it out. It's just forest, you know. 
And eventually, if he'll cleave once, he could come down, or he could keep cleaning up the waves that are up there. It doesn't really matter. It looks like he's killing some mods as we wait. I'm gonna put a little freeze trap here. I think this should work. So this looks like the final wave. But joke's on them, I put a freeze trap down. And I killed all their buddies. So once we're done with this, we'll move on. Uh, let's go pick up some items. I'll pick up some grinders. Now we have the advantage of being able to see where all the items are, but do take a little bit of time just to scan some items if you don't have it. Because there are usually a good amount of materials that drop. I have no idea where these HP material are, they must be higher up. So one thing that could be done is that uh, if you have Razan, you could stand where I'm standing to open the box without needing to go down there. Um, I think Murphy's killed the other wave, so we just need to do Operation Protect Murphy, followed by Operation Pick Up That PD. <laughs> so again, when in doubt, just protect them, <laughs> we're fine. So oh, there are so many Tri-Fluids that drop. Well, Murphy, if you needed uh, Tri-Fluids, let me know. There's uh, quite a few that just dropped. Don't need the Protect Frame or the Mono Fluid. So we technically finished the run, but sometimes what we'll do, just to give team members experience, we'll go as far as Dragon. So everything here is already dead. Murphy killed them when we were in the other room. He cheated. So for those not aware, he was using Razan to hit a set of boxes that were over here. So normally, if you come this way, you have to pop those boxes to get the hilt elves to spawn. But Murphy's like, nah, I'm too cool. <laughs> waiting, ar waiting around is for losers. <laughs> so we'll give Murphy double tri fluid. That should be good. If he needs it, of course. If not, I'll just pick it up for later. Okay, so what'll happen here is if you got a bazooka, use it. Otherwise, charge arm isn't bad. Or if you're really high ATP like Hunter, uh, Vulcans are pretty strong here with charge or berserk. Uh, we forgot to switch into our weapon because we're silly, but uh, yeah, we're just gonna bazooka him in the face. So between Zalor and everything else, as long as we get really close and hit multiple pieces, this should be big damage. Even things like Spread Needle up close should hit quite a few times. So just make sure whatever weapon you have just hits, gets close enough to hit multiple. The reason sometimes people will wail on it is see how... See, oh, see that? Chat, we actually did damage on the next phase. So in the phase where it's getting ready to roar, you're too slow, exactly. When it's getting ready to roar, there is a glitch that you could see with the monster reader HP that you could damage it on the next phase. So if you're wondering why we're attacking, some of it is out of habit. We're building meter, etc., uh, for other runs. But also, more importantly, we're trying to go for that glitch. So we're just kind of warming up into it a little bit for timing. And then from here, we can just quit the run. There's nothing more we have to do. We can telepipe back out of courtesy, I guess, if people want to sell things. Like, I'll, I'll pop a telepipe. The, the run is over. There's nothing I really want to do in the rest of Tyrells. Like, in theory, we could fight... Nano Dragons and Lilies for okay items. It doesn't hurt to check to see if there's a Mill Lily there, so you could hit the first four... Lilies and then move on. There we go. This is a run you should learn across many IDs. So I would recommend this run, for example. If you have Frozen Shooter at all in this run, if you're looking to do Heaven Punisher with Hilda Tour, for example, it's pretty good. Or if you have a combination of Boomas and Barbels that have really solid drops, which for the most part, honestly, is just Yellow ID. But technically, Green ID could get like Red Handgun or Tallow can get uh, a Gino 1975 for Viridian while they're going for other things. So there are other IDs that potentially benefit from that run. I feel like that's probably the more common of the items. Yeah, nice and smooth. Easy. Let's put away some PDs. Rip my PDs familiar. They got sacrificed to help leave. They went to a better place. We're just gonna drain our items in case I need to drop them a little more. Cool. I accidentally put my die grinder away. Okay, so up next we'll do, uh, I guess Endless? I I'm gonna push Endless. Endless is my agenda, chat. Listen, I want people to know this quest exists. What a fantastically amazing quest. Uh, actually I could just slash lobby out of here since we don't hand in anything when doing that portion of the run. So let's talk about Endless for people that haven't played Endless before. So Endless is a series of rooms, the order of which is randomized, the room contents are not. 
uh, that basically have a challenge that is also randomized if you want to get more money. Otherwise, feel free to ignore the challenge if you're looking to just do single loop. And the intent is that it's going to take you somewhere between forest and ruins. And every 10th floor is going to result in a boss fight. So what I would recommend is if you're player one and you're, you haven't seen Vault Op, to just equip Spread Needle as a precaution, because it's very easy to swap out of that as needed. Otherwise, I'll try to point out where there's healing circles on the quest to replenish traps. And uh, yeah, you could try to follow the little mini objectives if you want to try to earn the team more money. It also technically adds to time, but most of the time we reset before it's relevant. It's like, we're going to select VR and instead of Charles Ego, we're going to go to Endless Episode 1. One of my favorite quests of all time. So again, we could get one of three bosses. It's either going to be Dragon, Worm, or Volt Op. We're not guaranteed to fight all three in a run, since it stops every 20 floors to let you restock. Uh, but after that, if you somehow don't get a lot of penalties, so you're allowed one penalty per player, then you will go to falls. But spoilers, I don't want to go to falls, so feel free to botch a challenge at some point. If you have something that says don't hurt yourself and all you have are berserk weapons, then, you know, whatever. If it says don't use Masetta and I have charge arm out, I'm using Masetta chat. I don't know what to tell you. Generally ask ahead of time to make sure it's okay. I'm telling you it's okay to fail the challenge, so don't don't put pressure on yourself. You can choose to opt in if you want to try to give us a bonus. So make sure to talk to the console. You got to step a little further forward and then things will begin. So again, there's like, I think three or four rooms that give you a healing circle. Yeah, I think he was just slightly out of range. We should be starting soon. So again, most of it is just kind of reacting to the room. And again, almost nothing but beautiful drops. Avoid using the setup. Well, chat, uh, we're going to go ahead and fail the first challenge. <laughs> I am absolutely going to use this because all I brought is charge arm. So if you want to come in more prepared, I would say bring in a high defense armor for the no damage challenge. And I would recommend uh, having multiple types of dealing damage. So if you have Berserk Arm and Charge Arm, uh, that should cover basically all the major challenges. Make sure you have Spread Needle or something equivalent for uh, Volt Op and Cannon Rouge for the other bosses as needed. So again, the only downside I think about Endless is you can never fight the rare enemies, unfortunately. But it's good at everything else. And there's enough good rares that are not rare enemy that I think yellow ID is just absolute king. So I'll try to point out when I see a healing circle, but right now this room is not going to have one. Do note that healing circles don't appear until all the enemies are defeated. And most fortunately... Thank you, Shinsa, I'm into you. Oh, sorry to hear. But I will state, at least there's some boxes you could clear in most areas. So... Can also technically do this for box runs. Look at that, 90 seconds added. I love the one where it's like, don't die and it's on forest. Those are my favorite. Avoid using the setup. Got bad news, team. I'm gonna fail this challenge with flying colors. <laughs> right, chat, just like, I'm sorry. All I got is charge arm. But anyway, let's just go ahead and kill as quickly as possible. And again, not bad XP for like an episode one quest with like mixed bosses. So again, all these Talos, Barbels, everything else is there. Yeah, oops, all money. Yeah, but if you do want to seriously take on the challenge, I recommend a mixture of Berserk and Charge Arm. And that should cover you pretty well. So we'll stand here. Avoid taking damage. <laughs> Against Sinnoh and potentially Varans. Okay. I mean, maybe with like Jelen plus Hyper Defense, maybe. We'll see. I'm sure we'll get clipped randomly by lasers. Such as such as the way of life in episode one. Yeah, we want to see the no damage challenge in forest and maybe caves. We do not want to see it in ruins. Ruins is the worst. There's like no way it's gonna happen. There are just two there's so much set damage there and also high ATP. Some combination of that will say no. So there's a brands behind everybody. Ooh, nice freeze trap. Really good freeze trap. Let's go focus it down with Vulcans. So anyway, do your best to just kind of react to things that are falling here. But the enemies will match the area. Ooh, I like how he died semi-transparent. I think that's my favorite death so far. Again, just really solid... 
gameplay. There are no healing circles here either. We want to see them later in the run, so it's actually good that we don't see them this early. I want to see them when we're at like the ninth floor and like the or somewhere between floor nine and fourteen. I want to see just one. If we get more, it's nice. Yeah, when in doubt, if we see things like Del Sabers or like the annoying uh, Death Gunners, we're gonna try to freeze them solid. And if not, we'll, you know, we could always Frozen Shooter them. Surprisingly enough, we actually do want to see a really good mix of, I was gonna say caves and mines, but there's help me getting a Guardiana. Sadly, it doesn't look like it rolled with it or else it would have been announced. But again, just randomly potentially endgame items as you play this. So we're getting at about 100 XP a second. Pretty good before we fought any bosses. Minus five. Avoid using Vesetta. I'm so sorry. Now, one thing that's also really nice about Endless, which we haven't seen so far, which is a little unlucky, you have a chance of each time you enter a floor of being invulnerable. So that really helps for the no damage challenge. If we're really lucky, we'll get the no damage challenge and invincibility. And uh, as you can imagine, if you have Berserk items or you're dark flowing, being invulnerable for potentially up to 15 seconds is kind of insane. So we will take this for sure. Hello, Sinnoh Blues. I'd like you to perish. So again, we're just going to try to shut down waves. If we don't see a freeze trap, we'll just throw one down every now and then. Now, as a heads up, in a couple areas, we'll be receiving... Uh... Oh, there should be healing circle here. Okay, that's not a bad timing for it. So go, go wild with freeze traps. Go wild. You're going to restock them here if you want them. So I'm just going to throw them every wave. And you can see this really shuts it down. And you can get insane XP totals here. Let me just look at this. We're almost at 110 XP on episode one. No bosses yet. Ridiculous. So anyway, the healing circle should be back here for people that want to use it. It's back where like the arena teleport normally is. So I will gladly restore that there. Now to note that once we get to floor nine, it'll give us a warning that we're coming into a boss fight. So just as a reminder, if you're playing a cast, probably swap into your boss weapon once you're done with that floor. It will warn you at least. Yeah, we'll continue onwards. Avoid death. Ooh, but it's lilies. Hmm. Doable. Not ideal, but doable. Sometimes in caves, they have like really good lily spawns. This is one where we could die to them, maybe. Put down a couple of freeze traps. Grass assassins there give Heaven Punisher. So here's your Heaven Punisher chance for people looking for Ubers. <laughs> Put another one of those bad boys down. So you can see we are just absolutely demolishing these waves. And that's why I really like about this quest. Just a ton of enemies. Oh, it's not the room I was thinking it was. I was thinking it was going to be the double slime room. My bad. Misidentified the room. That, that room was fun. There's the invulnerability I was talking about. That's a perfect one for no healing challenges. Yeah, just be invincible. There's nothing they could do. You might as well combo. You can see it potentially lasts for a pretty long time. Like, we almost killed an entire wave before it wore off. So we have a lot of setup time, potentially for some big damage. Now I see Del Sabers and Sorcerers, so that tells me Freeze Trap. I don't want to deal with them otherwise. No, thank you. Oh, that was big damage we just did to them. So you can see we're just absolutely messing them up. So as long as we throw out a Freeze Trap every now and then, it just shuts down ruins so well. This is the power of cast. If Chad has not played cast before, oh, get a little bit of force support. Beautiful. Things explode. So we are going to go to the boss next. So I'm going to equip spread needle. Oh, I forgot to bring my spread needle. I knew I would forget this. I talked about this last time. I almost never put away spread needle. But I did earlier in the last session. We'll go pick that up next time. That is so sad. We use it specifically, not on this boss. We have backups for this. We could just do Bazooka if we really want to. Uh, but we can go ahead and use Spread Needle and Volt Up. So I'm going to hope we actually don't get Volt Up. But we'll see what happens. I'm going to use iframes and Bazooka Shots. So even though I don't have an Excalibur, Bazooka OP. <laughs> Thank you, Bazooka. You're the best. So yeah, we might, we might try to stall it for help leave. For somebody else with spread needle to take it. I'll pick it up next time. But yeah, this is a quest I love to return to. This is one of my favorite quests of all time. Okay, so we have no, uh, nine more floors before a boss. Ooh, this is one of the harder rooms. There's immediately a Darkbringer on our left and Death Gunners. 
which is a horrific, horrific combination. Honestly, this room is really hard. The one where it's like, don't, if you get a don't take damage in this room, I feel bad. It's pretty much like an auto lose. There's so much nonsense in the room. The first wave is very difficult to deal with. After that, it's not too bad. I'd like to kind of camp this ramp and play like tower defense. And then if they want to come towards me, I'll go end them. But yeah, it just helps like with freeze trap management. If we just funnel them there, it makes our life really easy. So you can see, as long as we're not like really split apart. Also, reminder, bulk claws are cycle wand chances. So we love to see bulk claw. So I do not want the bulk claw to split or also to reduce its rare rate. Fun fact, when it split, it used to not give a rare item at all until Infinia updated that. Thank you, Infinia. There are boxes at the far end. I will check them. On occasion, I have seen good items from these. Escape doll. I'm going to ignore that. Avoid healing. Oh, that is a that is a beautiful challenge to get in forest. Don't worry, way ahead of your game. So again, we're at 132 XP a second. So like a little under. No worries about the back blast. So we're a little under XP compared to like a TTF. But in terms of like the raw number of enemies you're killing, PD chances, eggs, common drops. It's really hard. TTF can't compete to this with this raw number of kills. It's so good. And again, we're also getting a lot of box checks, like they pop boxes over there earlier. Avoid healing. This is another one that gives guaranteed a uh, healing circle. So go go wild with traps. There was a Chaos Springer immediately behind us, which I forgot to mention, that was my bad. We're gonna go ahead and freeze trap him from existence. Don't mind me. So usually whoever player one is will get hunted down by a Grand Sorcerer here. So joke's on you, I already know you're gonna come for me. So die. There's a Grand Sorcerer on the other side. So potentially for those IDs with Psycho Wand on them, it's kind of huge. Now once we're done with this side and we flip over to the other, so we're now flipping over to the other side, there's going to be three Merlins at the top of the room, and the top of the room is where the healing circle is. So last chance to use Freeze Traps. They're going to be near that red door right in front of us. There we are. I'm going to go ahead and restock my Freezes, because I used 10 or so. 12. So just a really excellent way to get our traps back. And I like the fact that even though it's random, there's enough healing circles that generally you're going to get it about every eight floors. Sometimes you're really unlucky and then there's like four in the final floors, but whatever. Avoid healing. Um, It's an okay challenge room to get it on. This room's kind of hard to avoid damage because there are dragons potentially spawning that can be out of control unless you're in multiplayer. But from a perspective of just no healing, that's fine. And Milkweek is just gonna get shot down. There we go. Kill that Lily, kill that Lily. Chat's got the other ones, nicely done. Yeah, simple waves. Check the boxes, just in case. You never know, it could be PDs. Ah, uh, this is the room I thought we were in. This room is the harder version of the one we were just in. Now, I would recommend is if you're a cast, eventually there's going to be a double slime room. If you put a fire trap dead center in the room, it will kill all the slimes. So they are coming up in just a moment. So if you put a fire trap down, they should die here. I'm going to go ahead and do that now. So I think I killed the slime, even though he was frozen. Yep. So we just got to be real careful. This this room is the scary room. This can get out of hand real quick if you don't know where the lilies are. And again, we'll put down some occasional freeze traps to help out the team, which helps with enemy control. Otherwise, you know, if you happen to see an opportunity, you're near enemies, just freeze trap. Speaking of which, we found some event eggs. Perfect, perfect. I did pick up a tri-fluid for our friend here, so potentially if Murphy needs it, we could give it later. I think I'm up to three. Uh, three here. Goodbye, Branch of Paku Paku. I could have gotten you. I believe this room also has a freeze trap, or not freeze trap, has a healing circle. It's near the southwest door. So I think I'm also just going to go trap mad here. So you can see there's like a decent number of rooms. We haven't even seen the ones that are in mines, but there's usually about one per area, sometimes two. And uh, that usually makes it pretty fair, even if it is randomized. 
Oh my bad, it was the southeast corner. What a fun quest. Hmm. Not too many mines popped up this time around, but that's fine. Yellow ID has really strong ruins and forests. Cave is probably their weakest. Not to say they can't have some drops there, but... Pretty solid overall. See, I'm happy. This character is now 178, only two levels away from Red Ring usage. While getting to show off new quests to players. I just figure we'll make up for how much RT and TTF we've been doing. Just to say, we did, we did, we still technically did a little RT, but it's good to show off these other quests. Nicely done. So there's only two areas left. We got invincibility in this one. Awesome. So since I know there's only two dungeons left that require traps. Or allow traps, I mean, it's more accurate. I'm just gonna go ahead and freeze trap every single time. So we can abuse the fact that we're a high level cast. And just be like, oops, all freeze trap. Like, what can they do? I have 15 traps to use between two rooms. There's no way they're getting a chance to do anything. I'm gonna put fire trap down the middle. Nice job. Actually, team beat me to it. Good job, team. So again, we're just completely shutting down waves. It just makes... Murphy's life easy. Murphy now at 134. Congrats, Murphy, by the way. And we have one room left before we find another boss. Avoid taking damage and it gave us invulnerability. Oh, that's so beautiful. So I have 13 freeze traps to use in this room. So you bet basically every other time we're fighting something, I'm just going to throw out a freeze trap. So strong. Another room where I think if we put fire trap dead center, it kills all the slimes. So you can see our XP is just really consistent. 17 minutes of solid XP. Just so good, potentially. So we know this is a boss. I'm going to hope that this is not Volt Off. If it is, I'm going to need somebody to take over. Sometimes we'll get Mag Blast and we'll use it on the way there. Sadly, if we have used too much charge... Oh. Oh, we got lucky. We don't have to deal with Volt Off without Spread Needle. But anyway, if we use too much charge, sadly we can't build a lot of uh, meter or mag blast. So that is something to think about. You could try to play around it to get like a super buff. And again, if you have super buff with high D-band, that also means that you are basically effectively immune to the challenge loss of take damage. Because getting like level 60 80 D-band plus Jelen is enough to basically mean that only maybe set damage and ruin enemies might hurt you. So it's a pretty easy pass. So, so the dragon's dead already, by the way. I'm not even going to attack. That was the bug in full exhibition. Hope you enjoyed that. I didn't need to press anything. The boss already died. <laughs> Rip to the boss. So yeah, we're ending at almost 136 XP a second all the way through. We get to do some box checks. So congratulations. This quest is also kind of nice because you'll see as soon as one player goes through, it pauses the timer. And essentially, if you wanted to do another lap, you would just go ahead and touch that golden warp there. And if you're just looking to restock, it puts you right here. It's a very well thought out quest, honestly. If you want to hand it in as is, we could do it. Honestly, I say we do one more lap, but I pick up my spread needle. <laughs> this time without the jump scare. Do I have room for it? I do. So yeah, we'll do one more lab. We still got 16 minutes on the clock. That should be good. I'm gonna make sure that was spread needle. Okay, good, good, good. So we're just gonna touch that golden warp and then we'll just go back to murdering. How's my money situation looking? 363,000? Okay, I'm not that close to losing it all. Oh, you got your character can finally do the lock. Nice, nice. I mean, if you're confident, you could do the stunlock. I'd prefer you take it over if you're comfortable with it. Not all people that play Force are ready or have the gear. Nice, glad the ping issue disappeared. Oh, 
<laughs> Ooh, look at the super lobby. Ooh, super lobby. I think this happens when we're waiting for a player to load. Super lobby. He's gonna say it's loading for somebody. I'm running in the super lobby. There we go. Avoid using Masetta. Pat, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I got bad news for you. Uh oh, where's Murphy? Did Murphy get booted? Uh oh, challenge mode. I was wondering why it was taking a while there. Hmm. Now, sadly, it's going to reset our meter over time. I'm assuming Murphy maybe... I don't see him. You're in town. Oh, we're in the next warp. Are you able to join us, Murphy? I didn't think we were allowed to start before all players were there. Did you hit no or something? Yeah, that's gonna be a very slow clear then. We might have to slash lobby out of here, sadly. Let us know, Murphy. Yeah, uh oh. You hit yes. Hmm. Alright, we might have to leave then, sadly. We'll at least clean up a couple rooms. I'm assuming the warp is no longer there. Let's do one more room. Since it, it restocked me. Oh, time is up, apparently. Something weird happened. I guess because. Oh, I guess because you were in the town, it got confused. That's fine. I'll hand in the quest for money. Oh, yeah, that's still around my 15,000. That's fine. That could have been worse. <laughs> Quest got confused. Something weird happened. Well, that's fine. So let's see. We did Endless. We did Terrells. We did RT. I guess we could do some one-offs. Just to showcase more quests. <laughs> Uh-oh, indeed. What are we doing on the Bomberman soundtrack, by the way? Wow, 30 more songs to go. Hmm. So I think we'll do the Retrieval quest, which has a lot of Sinnohs. And then I want to try Hellcleave's quest. He has so to scratch when we talk to the quest lady. Damn. She's like, here's your reward, all F4. <laughs> and you're like, what's all F4? And it's just boom. It's all over. So yeah, so my recommendation for Yellow ID, look for high bonuses and combinations of Barans plus Sinnoh Blues. Sinnoh Reds are a little less important for them, because it's just S Red Arms. We'll give Burphy some time. Oh, if we're just making you flinch or something. True. Oh, I think it's Lost Soul Blade. Now, I guess the question is for the Retrieval Quest. Do you normally bother completing the full quest? I know I don't normally bother. I do the first floor of Lost Soul Blade and then I move on. I'm not sure if that's a Hulk Lee plays it or not. The second floor is okay. I just feel like it's a little more. It's a little more spread out. So there we go. This one says Retrieve Weapon from Bob. It's not like the boss rares matter super, super much. I mean, I guess if you really want Stink Shield, you go for it. Which is not bad. I'll leave it up to team discretion, really. So anyway, this quest just has like a lot of Barans, a lot of Sinnohs. That's why people used to play it. It kind of fell out of popularity once they changed the rare rates a bit specifically in Affinia. But, might as well show it off a little bit. Hydrating there. So when in doubt, I would say you can use fire traps on the little robots in the sky. Or if it's just gill chicks, you could just throw it at them. 
Otherwise, cats don't really have anything too exciting to do. They save the freeze traps for Sinnohs and Brands. Everything else is just kind of whatever. And you can see, like, there's a decent number of enemies spawning per wave. It's it's not going to be, like, your major XP quest. It's like, once you've settled and you feel comfortable with mines, you would just go back to this one. Whereas Endless, I think, is good for XP and also rares. I'm trying to remember the route. It's been a little while since I played it. I'll believe it might be going the right way, but I want to see just from the standpoint of the stream where this will take me. Ah, uh, the two-switch room. So this one is whoever whoever picks a path is stuck there. So I'm going to wait for the team a little bit here. So I'm going to go left. Everybody else has to deal with the others. So as soon as I touch this, bad things are going to happen. And I believe if you're late to the party, you get a warp into the room. I don't know where it puts you, though. Uh, put Hell Cleave on the other side. Nice, nice. We are supported by Hell Cleave. I had a feeling something like that would happen. Yeah, there's gonna be a mix of Sinnoh spawning gradually further and further down the room. But, uh, spoilers, cats don't really care. Spoilers. Gafoe doesn't care where they spawn. They're gonna get hit. Yeah, these enemies are a little tricky. Like, we've got to move a little further for them, but as long as I don't power attack too much, I can probably, like, normal, normal power while team's doing some power, so that way I don't push them out of distance. Here's a good example where I should freeze trap. Also, this is going to destroy the team. I like they, they straight up just went right for Murphy. They're like, oh, there's a little force there. We're going to murder him. So now I believe a little gate has been opened up so they could go the other way. Uh, I want to say up was just a box, yeah. I think up was just a healing item. I always forget which one is the real switch. I'm assuming it's this one. Go for the healer first, not wrong. So I've now hit the optional switch. I do want to actually take that HP material. I don't want to leave that behind. I thought about it. There we go. So anyway, it's just a series of fake switches. Bring trap vision or memorize which one is the correct one. Looks like that one is the real one. Why are there the random vocal clips in this soundtrack? No, go to a real. Hold on, I'm pausing. When are we getting to a real song? One second. Is it just seriously 40 more songs of singles? No, 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 we're not doing that. <laughs> Listen, I like Bomberman soundtrack, but I don't want to hear. Round start, game start, game end for like four minutes straight. No thank you. So anyway, we're kind of split up. We have one side over there kind of fighting for their life, which is help leave. I'm just going to open up these boxes while we're here just to showcase them. But anyway, it's kind of a nice mix. Team can kind of choose what side they go on. That's what I do like about the quest. You know, like snipers can stay up here perched, having fun. Horses can still support. Or help leave is acting the role of the hunter there. So technically, if we want to optimize it a little bit, we'll do things like telepipes. I'm not going to be really hung up on it. I just want to showcase the quest. But just be aware that, like, you can see the time it takes for me to warp around. If we have somebody that just walks to the next area, they just drop an easy telepipe. But I want to showcase, for the sake of the stream, what the path looks like. Since this is all new areas. So you can see that would have been about maybe 15 seconds help Cleave would have saved us. So if not, just take a telepipe and you just join us here. We do need everybody together. So this room has a ton of Sinnohs. We're just waiting on Murphy. Wherever Murphy is. Rip Murphy. Take a look at the map. Oh, Murphy's just collecting items in there. I see Murphy now. Join us, Murphy. We have cookies. There we go, nice warp. So you can see these Sinnoh Blues, good chance of the units that we're looking for. So typically what I said is before is I usually just clear the first floor. I'm more comfortable with the first floor. I don't... I remember the second floor has like a really weird Baran setup, which is kind of annoying to deal with if you don't have a well-geared party. But this room is just kind of fantastic back-to-back -back Sinnohs. Just really easy kills. 
Again, just put another freeze trap down. Got him again. GG. Outplayed. I honestly don't recall if there's any healing circles in this area. It, normally I reset before it's relevant. So essentially, we're gonna murder our way forward. I'm trying to remember. Oh, this might be the confusing room where I have to go south. I think this is where I normally get confused when I do this quest. Where I potentially have to go in the southern doors to open stuff up. I'm gonna touch the warp here. Chat can just do whatever they want. So I should get Sinnoh in a moment. Again, that gives me a long time. Technically, you can even dark flow them, I think, when they're up in the sky like that for like really cheesy kills. So I could just dark flow if I know their positions again. Because for whatever reason, they are up hilariously high compared to other enemies. But things with near infinite verticality will destroy them. So again, I'll keep Murphy safe. All those Sinnoh blues are exactly what we're looking to hunt. Congratulations! So I'm gonna double check we don't need to hit something down here as the team goes up north. Because I feel like this is the room that baits me where there's like one switch I have to hit or else we can't advance. So I'm just gonna look right now. Is this the room with the switch? No, but there is a Sinnoh in here. And we'll take that. That is not the swap I wanted to do. That's fine. I mean, that's fine. We could we could get more kills. Team could deal with the upper path. I must be thinking about other mines quests. There's one mines quest where you have to go, like, there's a switch right here. And if you don't do that, you can't advance. But it looks like that's not this quest. But on the plus side, we're going to showcase some solo room murdering. So I'll probably telepipe to the team in a moment to get caught up since they went to the north. Tad has found the ring. Oh, there are a lot more enemies in this room than I thought there would be. There is a red door down here, though, which has me very suspicious, by the way. Help Thief's TP is by it. Help Thief is yellow. I'll go pick that up in a moment. Oh, uh, unfortunate. I had to burn a heal there. All that for a single box. That is kind of not worth it, to be honest with you. Let's go to Help Thief's Warp. Thank you, Hope Lead. Let's take a look at the area map to get context of where we are. So they just went up a room. Two rooms, it looks like. Oh, this is where it wraps into the big open area. Now I remember. So Team was probably fighting some uh, nasty enemies earlier. Barans, maybe. Give me one second. There we go. So we'll catch up to the team in a moment. Watch the team murder all these enemies. The bottom room was worth it maybe for one Sinnoh, but I don't think the rest of the waves were worth it, sadly. Hey, I guess if you want XP and don't mind the telepipe, that's not too bad. So many Sinnohs. Oops, all Sinnohs. I mean, just look how many there are. <laughs> They're like, I heard you want Sinnoh rares. Should be traps, right? Yeah, just some boxes to open. Nothing too exciting in this room. I believe north is the exit. I don't believe this is the exit. Oh no, it is the exit. My bad. Reverse it in my head. Oh, might as well just clear the other room. Love that there's a little switch to go backwards a little faster. So I'm going to activate this so we can walk back to the exit faster, and then check and take the northern door, which might be just like a treasure chest or something. Oh, a couple. There's a couple. Oh, you like that? How clean one in the treasure room? They spawned in ambush. That was cute. That was cute. So yeah, normally at this point, in the room they were in prior is usually where I stop the quest. I don't even... I don't even get to this room most of the time. I quit right before, because there's only cannabins in the last room. So here we're going to get to a series of harder Baran spawn. And, you know, we do get some Barans from it, but just be warned. There's a couple ones where we get split up by laser gates, which are kind of annoying.
We got a bit of time for before those though. Oops, out of range. Yeah, the healing circle is kind of late. It makes more sense if you're good going for both floors to take it. Most of the time it's not needed. Oh, they're mine. Speaking of uh, laser gates, are you ready for me to step on a switch and terrible things to happen? Just casually step on a couple bot switches. What's the worst that could happen? Surely we won't be isolated by laser gates. Surely everything will be fine if I touch all these switches. Oh, chat's about to touch the last one. <laughs> there we go. Oops. Yeah, this this room is um, something. Good luck, chat. Eventually, the people that are in the back are about to get hosed by Barans. It's also kind of annoying because it, unless people are in the side gates, we don't have like a really good way of hitting all the Barans before they can missile because they could spawn like where the far sinos are. So I think the intent is to split the, the team up a little bit. Oh, Magblast. So that each person covers a quadrant, I think is the intended one. Yeah, you can see like... El Cleave and I are on this one, but when we start fighting the other ones, that's where the problem starts to happen. So potentially hitting the wrong order in single player could be very devastating. Now fortunately we're close enough to this one, we should be fine. Frozen Shooter says no. Yeah, this is like the room I remember from the quest, because we're just kind of here forever. Rip the Senno Reds, I guess. So fortunately, the team is at least a little split, so we can hit the ones that are further away. I'm just gonna freeze you. I'm just gonna put a freeze trap down. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna say no. <laughs> when you see that many Sinnohs, you're like, mm-mm. That's the problem I was talking about. Certain characters can't deal with that Barans that spawn there. Which can be kind of annoying if you're playing a hunter. Fortunately, we dealt with that pretty well. Make some mono grinders. Get power material on the floor here. So there's a couple different ways we could go. Honestly, it's been so long since I've done this, I definitely cannot tell you what direction we need to go in. Not even gonna attempt. I'm just gonna pick a direction. There we go. So we could eventually say northeast, not worth. But hey, we're eliminating one by one. Let's see, we have two doors to the south here. Imagine the one straight across is just extra Sinnohs. That is not the way to go. So I'm gonna kill them for the extra Sinnohs. Leaf South is where we need to go, because I could see a double door. But I did see double Sinnoh, and they needed to die. Is this just items? Let's find out. Indeed, it is items. I think it's worth killing those double Sinnoh for a yellow ID. Beat the chat a little easier. Oof, chat getting the PDs from this room. Oh, hey, yellow barrier. Congratulations. Look at those random box rares. <laughs> oh, yellow ID. You just end up with all the elemental merges for no reason. Uh, the infamous S room. Now, a lot of these S rooms like to stack at least two Barans, usually at the top and bottom of the S, if you want to think of it that way. There are some that attack you while you're on the bridge, so whenever I'm between waves, I'm just gonna quit Frozen Shooter. They've reused this room in so many quests, I just don't trust it at all to not have Barans. Speaking of which... <laughs> just there's no faith in this room chat i'm like there's no way i'm getting through and not getting barans oh the diagonal oh that was sneaky oh they almost got me on that one but fortunately unfortunately for them i had my frozen shooter out so i'm not i'm not playing by their rules i 
Now sometimes it doesn't look like in this room. I'm used to seeing a Barans here and or Red Sinnoh, depending on the quest. Oh, it's one of these trap hallways. Whatever. It's detonating time. There's a little trap in the ceiling. I'm just gonna shoot it immediately. That's one of the ones where if you have like a kunai with a uh, Hugh Casile, for example, or uh, I guess Hunter in general, you could hit that pretty easy. This kunai goes very, very tall. Sadly, paralysis does not impact these enemies. And I believe it ends in a dark room, if I'm remembering this quest correctly. At least this room's pretty good for Sinnoh. So many Sinnoh attempts. Holy. Look at that chat, just the wall of Sinnoh. So still got 12 freeze traps. Ah, oh, there we go. Here's the dark room. Here it is. I'm ready to get punished hitting that laser switch. Oh, you thought you could surprise me? Joke's on you. I put my freeze trap out already. You can't surprise this. Nice try, though. I'm going to hit the switch so check and see. Little, little bait there from the game. Let's go ahead and freeze these. Ooh, excellent kill. Oh, I'm in the unhappy zone. You know what? I'm stunlocking with Barans and Gafoe, and that's all that matters. The fact that they never got out of their animation to help the other team. I can sort of hit them with Barans from here at least. <laughs> Wish me luck, I'm soloing my side. Thank you, team. Uh, I feel like we're almost done with the quest, to be honest with you. I think these are just optional rooms. I just will check the optional rooms. There's a blue gate here, which turns off a chest laser, presumably. But not the one we're looking for. So I think once we get enough kills, I could go in the little cubby that's over there. So I think they deactivated the laser gate that I need to hit. Let's see. Oh, all that just for chess. Never mind. Never mind. I mean, they did help. <laughs> now let's go assist them. I could stay on that platform and snipe. There's also a blue laser gate thing that we can open there. Normally when you see this kind of quest, like in Terrell's Ego, it's usually like scape dolls above you in Terrell's Ego. Not bad, not bad. Yeah, I think we missed the switch back there if we wanted bonus items, but it's fun. Uh, the real switch is... the furthest one? Yeah, the furthest one. There is a light switch in here. So again, this kind of quest you're not going to be doing for XP. It is purely for grinding very specific enemies. Or as I mentioned earlier, Things like RT, TTF, Terrell's Ego, they actually get fairly significant XP for what they are. Let's go ahead and freeze you solid. Nice event egg again. It <laughs> landed frozen, GG. Never given a chance. Protect the force. There we go. Leave our force alone. Nicely done from team there. Take a look what's in the corner. Hmm. Multi doorway. Interesting. Ooh, really big room. Okay, before I go in the big room, what's, our, what's in these rooms? Healing circle. I'm gonna put a telepipe near the healing circle for people that need it. I'm assuming team might be fighting in another room. I'll help in a moment. I did see a Seize Gladius. I thought about picking it up earlier, but I'm kind of like, eh. So I'll check the bottom right before we go further. I think the way we were going is the correct way. But what's in this bottom right? 
We'll find out in a moment. Probably just... Oh, just the boss? Oh. Well, I want to check out the other room, because there's Sinnoh Blues. <laughs> I'll consider that the right way for the quest. Good to know, I guess. So we took a little detour down there. I guess we'll go clean these up. There are a lot of traps in here. Ooh, there's like a really disgusting amount of traps in here. Get away from me. And we might as well just do the boss. Oh, that's Red Arm. Somewhere. That I can't pick up. That's so sad. I didn't die. That's the important thing. I eventually need to drop an item that I shouldn't be holding. Probably evade materials. So that switch didn't do anything? Oh, I'm getting ambushed. <laughs> okay, that makes more sense. Leave me alone. Oh, more Varans. Hello. Thought we were done with the room because we opened up the next door. I guess because the switch was open, it opened it up. Yeah. Interesting. Anyway, let's go back to the boss room. Ooh, one oh, That should be good. Sort our inventory, put our spread needle. Put down a telepipe, because I'm here. People don't feel like walking. It's right there. Sort our inventory again. Let's our tri-fluids eventually. Give some back to uh, Murphy here. Drop three over here. Gotta step out for the next one, no problem. Oh. There we go. I could split the stack if it would help. I'll split it later. I'll drop them as individuals when we're done with the quest. Okay, so I'm gonna go for the solo stun law. So don't worry about a team, I got this. Unless Murphy wants to Kazan. Ah, I'll let Murphy do it. Nicely done. Good job, Murphy. Murphy at a solid 135. Cleave has to step out for this one. We'll do the one that Hell Cleave recommended. Just let me know. It was Sweep Up Operation 3, right? For the mines. I think that's what I wrote down earlier. Goodbye, Vault Up Virgin 2. So we'll try it a little bit. We'll go up to the point where I have to take the warp. I wrote down, take warp and quest. <laughs> that's literally what I wrote down. Yeah, so I get to see how that quest feels. Let's take these. And then, uh, we'll maybe do some episode 4 yellow? Even if you do the full thing? I mean, I guess I could do it just to do it. I don't know if it's a quest I've ever done before. There are a lot of quests in PSO I haven't tried yet. Let's go ahead and drop Murphy some tri-fluids or whatever. We'll scatter them like little presents back in town. So yeah, this character is very gradually getting some XP, which is nice. We'll try that quest out, and then I think that's it for episode one. Honestly, I think between Endless, covering literally every category, Tyrells for Forest, we did a Mines quest. We'll try another Mines quest. I guess in theory we could do one Ruins quest. Although I have to think about which one would make the most sense. Gotta go, sadly. Well, thank you for joining us, Marco. Glad the earlier stream allowed you to join us.
is the problem with the quest I normally do does a lot of Dell Savers, but not the other things. Actually, that's kind of funny. Wait a minute. No problem. Always glad to have you. We'll try to do some uh, more European time zone friendly streams in the near future. Probably starting this weekend. Ooh. <laughs> I just I just thought of a really really interesting quest to do, but we're going to need Hellcleave for that. I was just like, there is one quest that has a lot of Laudemians. It's a rather infamous quest. We're not we're not full clearing said quest though. We're not madmen. But it involves the quest of episode one. People that have been on the stream before know what I'm talking about. It's the one you never want to go to floor three on, or else suffering occurs. But that quest actually has a shocking number of things that are good for yellow ID. Between the high Bullclaw count and the high Laudemians, I think that's actually a valid quest to run. To be honest with you. Because there's a uh, there's 93 Laudemians in this quest, which is insanely high. Think about it this way, most of the other quest recommendations comparatively are 37 and 36, to give you an idea. So it is it is by far the highest chance of getting the Law Demian rare. Which uh in the case of Yellow ID is spread needle. And keep in mind that bulk, which this quest also has a lot of, is a psycho wand. So who knows, maybe we'll strike it rich. So we'll keep it simple with a simple minds quest first. We'll need a stronger party, I think, for the other people. So if anybody wants to hop in and take Marco's place, more than welcome. Thank you again, Marco. Gonna restart PC, no problem. Do a little bit of downtime here. So people looking to try new things. As kind of the forgive us for doing one quest all the time. <laughs> this this is your apology video as we go through many different quests. Eventually we'll get around to green ID. As I said before, there's maybe two more quests I'm gonna showcase, and then we'll do two episode four yellow IDs. And that'll be about it. The rest will probably be Green ID. Green ID has very focused runs, but their runs are phenomenal. Like, they're just... It, it, it is TTF, I'm not gonna lie. TTF Green ID is really, really good. But it's also pretty solid with some of the other Episode 4s. So we could showcase it there as well. I'm not gonna showcase, like, every Episode 4 quest, because... Pretty much all of them are amazing, but it, we'll try to do slightly different ones than the ones we show for Yellow ID. So for people looking for things to do. Uh, literally no weapons of interest, that's so sad. We'll wait for the team a little bit. assortment of items. <laughs> I do like the 60% dark spread needle. That is very funny to me, though. If only, chat. If that dark was just one slot lower. Oh, can you imagine 60 hit spread needle? Would have been so disgusting. Welcome back, Murphy. Truly, truly, truly outrageous. So close. So we'll wait in episode 1 lobby for a little bit. We're apparently in gravity generator chamber. It feels like one note sustained. Is there anything else to the song? I kid you not, I barely even noticed I skipped. Okay, next song. <laughs> it just, it just, whoa, <laughs> just. I don't know if I really want to consider that a song. That feels more like ambiance. It sounds more like a sustained sound effect than a song.
The next quest will do one last thing in mines. But we will need at least Murphy before we begin. If a glycemic lion tamer, it's quite a title. Okay, Murphy has arrived. We'll give Chad a moment or two. Be aware, we do have some open slots. Don't feel free, don't be afraid to join. We're just gonna discuss quests as we go through them. We have no expectations of gear. We're just doing random quests. Let's go through. Check this out, that looks good. So it looks like starting tomorrow, I'm gonna have to reschedule some things for you too. So look forward to that. We have quite a backlog. I almost finished the updated the other one. Bring a 50 hit arms or discard, you're good. Honestly, if they're brand new players, I don't even need that much. Just existing is probably good enough. So we'll give the chat 30 seconds. Otherwise, we'll do a duo mines quest. Fortunately, it shouldn't be super intense. This character is 3 ATP off of their cap. They're so close, chat. It's so sad. Fortunately, I gave him the machine percentage one to deal with all the machines here, so he actually has got a decent bonus. You no, know, 50 hit, 25 machine. That's not bad, given how much he does mines. I will take that over the standards for sure. Already cap my ATA, FOMAR please, yeah, oof. Or 163. Alright, well, I guess it's just you and me. I believe it's extermination. It's... I feel myself second guessing again. Mop up or sweep up? We'll find out in a moment. Okay, I wrote sweep up. Again, there's so many that are so similar. So let's check it out. Del Cleave was recommending to check out this quest. What is that, says Blue Donna? What an apt question. We'll find out in a moment. Apparently it's very good for cannabin leaders early on. So I might as well as go until the time limit dies. Say if you're looking for vices or whatever. Vices in Yashminikov's not a bad purple ID alternate. There's the switch. <laughs> I'm like, I'm not messing around with them. Just perish. Wait, where's Sinnoh Blue? Oh, there it is. Answer that question real quick. So yeah, probably a little difficult to clear with just two people with the time limit. But we'll see what we do. Now there's a very specific room I remember looking at that hopefully mentioned that that's where you could potentially reset. So we'll make note of that as we go forward. Right now we still have some time. Oh, it's like they want to be freeze trapped. You believed in the 20% mega chance? That's what you could say. Just say you, you, you were feeling it. Oh, this is the trap hallway. Nice try, game. Yeah, so if we end up back in this room, we're officially done. I don't know if we have to clear that other room yet, but I'm gonna take a little look in here. Poor Murphy vidding shot at things. I mean, while in the side room. See where this leads us. Interesting. I think I shot the switch by accident, and we will gladly take that accident. Then here is just some items. Wild Dan goes home. Oh, it just keeps going. <laughs> okay, never mind. Well, I guess I should go to help. Welcome, Dago. Poor Murphy, having the fight of his life over here with Barans. Uh, 
Oh, there's the lone cannabin. I might as well just kill it. Kind of an interesting choice to have that big S room, but then not do anything with it right away. Onwards we go. So again, potentially some vice chances here mixed with Yashminikov. So I could kind of see myself doing the run that Health Weave is mentioning. And so far, if I was playing Raw Moral, which is my purple ID, I'd be fine with this run. Perish Barans. You do not belong in this world. But you're welcome to join in on the next one, Dango. We will probably need you for sure. Because we're going to do a much harder Mines quest. Although this one with the time limit might be hard to clear with just two people. I at least wanted to see a little bit of this quest. It's the infamous quest, but we all stop at floor two for sanity's sake. Because on yellow ID, as a reminder, Bull Claw is Psycho Wand, and La Demian is uh, Spread Needle. So this is kind of like the quest. Ah, uh, so I could hit the switch, warp back, and I can quit. I can quit basically after we clear that room, if I just wanted fast cannabis leaders. Because they're kind of annoying to get. I agree with Helpley. Normally they're like really deep in a quest. So if there is a rare on them that they have, like a Kasami Bracer or like Yashminikov, they are more annoying than they should be to hunt. Anyway, we'll keep going until the time limit. Yeah, Hellcleave is like vice. There's only vice. It's true though. Yeah, we'll go a little further. That would be the normal stopping point for our purple AD runs. I mean, for me, I would do it for Yashminikov, to be real with you. I, I I have all the vices I need, I think. We're good. Ooh, he wants me. I did time that properly. That felt good. I'm like, I think I counted exactly when he would unfreeze. I'll do that. It's poor, poor enemies. Some boxes. You never know, you could be surprised by yellow ID. That did not auto aim like I wanted it to. That was unfortunate. On the plus side, my confused trap was doing damage for me. Hopefully you're doing well, Dango. How was the wild Dango's time at work? Oh, I thought I could hit it with charge on the way down. So close. GG. Yeah, those Red Sinos are kind of annoying, because they basically only take Rabarda in a world where everything else gets Gafoid. It's so sad when that happens. Get a bit of a party. That's nice to hear. That time it targeted like I wanted to. GG, I got the delete button. Easy. 
<laughs> I'm like, where's the switch? Rotate, rotate, rotate. It's not even hidden. Just up in the air. Makes my life easy. Arceus asking us which add-ons are we using? Uh, pretty much just the basic set. Honestly, we have one additional one, I think, for XP bar, and that's it. Otherwise, they're just all the core uh, Eidolon ones. We do have a uh, folder of our add-ons for people that were curious on the Discord. But yeah, I keep it very simple. I just, I just want to see basically drops, party info, Enemy statistics. I swap characters very often and accuracy is kind of nebulous in PSO. So it's like I'm not really going to sit there and figure out that I have an 82% chance of landing special on Gilchik. I'm not going to sit there with the calculator. I'm sorry, chat. Do you not want to do that? Helps sometimes with enemy weakness. More often than not, I remember, but it doesn't hurt to have it there if I'm not sure. Like, what are the chances of me instant killing an enemy on very hard with hell? For example, it's not something I'm gonna know off the top of my head. Get rid of these. Well, welcome, Arceus. Hope you're doing well. Welcome to the stream. Let's get rid of these guys. Just started playing again. Drop on on was such an insane quality of life improvement. Yeah. Yeah, we, ha we put out a guide actually to go over, I think, some of the ones that are used. We also have something updating with our map item.txt, which allows us to color coordinate the drops of the game with a little more control. So, for example, you know, Escape Doll is green, which is common, but we have like a lot of the materials marked in yellow. We have like trimates marked with uh, blues. We have trifluids marked with pink. So that way, you know, I could just look at the mini map and go, oh, if I'm looking for something, it's there. I think we're about to time out on the quest since we're only two people. I, I think we saw a decent amount of it. I imagine we were probably not too far from the end. So yeah, I just wanted to give this quest a shot since Chad had recommended it. It's not bad. More vice chances if we had uh, Purple ID. Rip those enemies. Yeah, let us know, Arceus, if you have any questions or wanted to hop in and join in a game. That was not a good decision. I deserve to die for that. Mag invincibility, you could not have come at a better time. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, that was one of the best mag invincibility triggers I've ever had. I just ignored all that. That could have been so bad. Instead, get away without being punished. Unless the game wants to drop me V101 and I run out of time, that would make me pretty sad. Speaking of which, I'm going to just drop an item slot now, just so that doesn't happen, or it is unlikely to happen. So sadly, it looks like we're not going to be able to complete the quest with just two people. But hey, I had fun with what it was. It looked like it was finally getting to like the meat of the quest, so I feel like that was pretty final room. But anyway, let's move on. Let's try another episode one quest. All for the sake of pursuit in yellow ID. So we're going to be doing... But I got further if I was Ranger and said, maybe. It's definitely just hard with two people in general. Three people, I think we would have been totally fine. Welcome, Dango. Welcome, Hellcleave. So anyway, we're going to be doing the one, the only, fragments of memory, but only up to floor two. So we're going to clear floor two. This quest is unironically really good on yellow ID. So hey, remember that one quest we did for red ID earlier? Actually not a total meme. <laughs> I mean, floor two is kind of meme -y. Floor three is absolute meme. <laughs> do not do floor three on ultimate. You have no memories of this quest? Oh, Murphy. I'm so sorry if that's a true statement. We're, we're, gonna, we're gonna open the horrific memories. There's a reason you never go to floor three. Oh, I don't want to go to floor 3. It's horrible. It is one of the most unplayable quests to complete I have ever experienced. Do not go to floor 3. 
It's it's terrible. I have never ever completed it on ultimate. It is that horrible. <laughs> Even willingly, I could not complete that quest. I couldn't do it. I got booted from the quest. It was so sad. But floor two is beatable at least. Yeah, floor three is like the stuff of nightmares. Yeah, imagine, okay, for those that have never seen Floor 3 before, imagine there's a gimmick where constantly, throughout the entirety of the dungeon, if at any point you are moving, you will summon spirits. If the spirits touch you, you are teleported all the way back to the beginning of Floor 3. You have to somehow navigate the entirety of Floor 3 while attacking, while dodging, without ever getting teleported back. And this includes dodging moving traps. This includes fighting really hard to fight enemies like Del Saber. And this also means if you ever get knocked down, getting knocked down gets counted as movement. So you will just be taken if you ever get knocked down, essentially, and you happen to be at an unlucky timing. So one knockdown, GG, restart the whole floor. And then, uh, yeah, they also decide that for some reason, you get a limited number of attempts. So it is quite horrendous. Oh yeah, mag blast makes you lose instantly. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah, if somebody accidentally mag blasts, you can make the whole party lose instantly. I'll go all the way back to start. <laughs> it's so trolly and so terrible. I have no idea why they made it. It's one of the worst mechanics I've seen in all of PSO. Arguably, of most games of this age, it's pretty bad. It makes the quest basically unplayable. Yeah, I, I think it's true. I think I am 100% more likely to complete Tower as a lower level character than I am to complete that quest. I mean, I couldn't even complete it with like a 190. Like if at any point you are just moving or comboing, oh, attacking also causes them to come towards you just for clarity. So it's not just like physical movement. Like you have to be in the I'm standing still animation just for clarity. If you're healing, if you're casting, if you're attacking, that counts as moving. It's so bad. <laughs> it's red light, green light, except you then have to go through a really horrific level. It is truly the thing of nightmares. I don't even know how I would describe to you how to get through that. Because again, you also have to dodge like traps and like other kooky walkways. It's, it's something else. Yeah, God, I hope we have godly micro movement. Yeah, occasionally we'll just do like little taps to try to dodge swings, but not get picked up by the teleporter. And again, like think about how many times you're moving to reposition to shoot. So you, you would have to potentially just face tank that group of claws, for example. Here's our Psycho 1 chances all in one room. Beautiful. Again, the first floor is purely for Psycho 1 runs as yellow ID, which is really funny. But again, like, there's just so many good drops from all of these enemies. <laughs> just kind of take what you can. Normally, I think most people do, what is it called? Endless Nightmare 4. Endless Nightmare 4 is a very popular one for things like, I think, Green ID, but it's popular for Heavenly Arms and a couple of other good uh, potential Spread Needle-esque ones. This is, this is their version. See, this is four Psycho Wand attempts. Like, there's actually a legitimately high number of uber enemies to kill in this quest and probably one of the only times you'll go for this also a reminder indie belros are heavenly arms yeah you basic basically if you ever leave a doorway and can't just instantly become invincible when the bad things are happening it's just over gg so it's really unfun to play in multiplayer for that reason so also if enough people in general fail you also fail because I think for me, I only got zipped maybe two or three times in the quest, but it looks at overall how many people are, have been zipped before it fails you, which is just absolutely brutal. So yeah, just really questionable quest design. Uh, well, I'm going to go left, I guess. Kind of liking the soundtrack. Don't mind me, just getting some Psycho Wand attempts. We're all on the same floor, so we should all get items from each other. Despite the warp. Could you imagine if that was a cycle one for somebody? Knock these claws back a little bit. 
think I'll start doing the all by myself song. Making some progress at least. Unfortunately, we don't really get as many things from Del Saber as other people do. Like, a lot of people get Swordsman lore. Swordsman lore is now on, uh, what's it called? Episode 4 for this character. Yeah, we ended up doing a lot more yellow ID runs than I was thinking. They just kind of slowly came to me. Oh no, there's a PD near somebody. Oh no, I gotta find that later. That's gonna be horrible. Oh my gosh, thankfully I still have Shifta. This room would have been the end of me. Look at this room. That room was horrific. Holy, double Indie Bella, triple Sorcerer. Could you imagine if I was undergeared, how horrible that would be? That would have been GG. Solo multiplayer, that would have been the GG. Oh, oh no, that that is actually so much worse. Get away from me. Holy, get away from me, Del Sabers. <laughs> Hey, we're putting down a fire trap here and heal. Thank you, fire trap. I'm not gonna lie, my rooms are feeling kind of stacked. This is insane how many enemies I have to kill here. Thankfully, I am still buffed for the next minute or so. But after that, sad things will happen. Okay, I fought my way to doors. Found ball claws, which I want to make sure we push backwards. Or they just ignore my pushback. Cool. Hate that. Oh, I almost killed him before he split. Oh, the claws body block. No, they ate the shotgun blast. Oh, that was worst possible scenario. That is so sad. I might have to just teleport to the team. This is kind of insane. Look how many things I'm fighting at once. <laughs> this is kind of uh, interesting. Please get away from me. Didn't quite kill. That should kill, though. <laughs> I might have to send the SOS soon. Holy. I mean, this feels like endgame clear. I don't know about you, chat. Like, what was that? Three Del Savers, two Indy Belra, Sorcerer? Holy. Green is down for southeast. I'm just, I'm not even sure what my goal is. I think I'm just moving. I should hit a dead end soon. Yeah, thankfully I've now found a healing circle. I earned that healing circle chat. <laughs> that was monstrous. Okay, so I see where the PD is. I think I'm gonna go get it. So I'll group up with whoever's over here. Looks like somebody is fighting these things. Oh, I love the abandonment. Never mind. We're we're not we're not teaming up with each other. GG. What? Why didn't it hit the freeze trap? Game, please. I feel like I got trolled on that one. I don't under I don't understand how the freeze trap didn't get hit there. It I guess it targeted the enemy over the freeze trap or something weird. That was unfortunate. Oh, they don't get knocked back on special? I thought they did. Okay. My bad. Been a while since I fought them. I know hard attack pushes them back, but I thought that one did. Oh, well. Alright. Let's freeze them. Okay, that's a pretty good clear. you, give help leave some opportunity to move. Yeah, unfortunately we're not with the force. This is gonna go very slow. I just want to get to that PD. Like, listen. Oh, does this not go that way? Uh, oh, no, it does. It does. Okay, thankfully. I want the PD. We'll figure out where the team went from here. Alright, so I've cleared out all of the north side and the southeast. So we could go through the bottom double doors. I see somebody else is there. Do we just need... Oh, there's Murphy. Murphy has been found. 
regrouping with Murphy. So I think the rest of the team just needs to go south here. Where did the rest of the team go? What? I run the mini map a moment ago. Oh, there they are. Oh, I've been buffed. Alright, so the only path I haven't gone down is this double door. So that I should be able to murder my way to the next area. I knew that my material would be nice, but not like mandatory. That PD was mandatory. Put a freeze trap down. Oh, they hit me! No, I got wombo comboed! <sighs> Man, I hate high health so much. Rip, rip high health. It really is just kind of like if you go above a certain threshold, you just die. If that was any other character, I would have been knocked down by that. It's so unfortunate. Rip. Just have to get more defense, I guess. Which we'll get with Red Ring, which will help make high HP not feel completely horrific. Okay. Let's go for a freeze here. Put a telepipe down for Hellcleave if he wants to find me. Lock one, somebody has found something. Nice, nice. Heaven Punisher. Got it from a miracle. Interesting. Time to make them go away from the group. I did manage to get Mag Blast. I've been holding on to it for a little bit. I think getting bullied by those other enemies built up a million meter. Take these. If we didn't have to backtrack so much, I think the XP would have been like 120 plus. Which is unfortunate. But now that we have to backtrack, we're just trying to figure out where to go. So we ruled out the bottom route. I guess we have to go... Left there? To... Yeah, we have to go left there to complete. So I'm not sure if anybody was that way and put a telepipe down. Like, it was definitely needed for us to clear these rooms, because these are like the... Psycho wand chances and everything else. Oh, poor Hellcleave. So yeah, I think if we go left and then up, that should be the exit. So yeah, the warps did send us randomly, unfortunately. Push them all back into specials. It's kind of funny that only heavy attack moves them backwards, even though charge attack does more damage. Yeah, we're gonna say no to these Del Sabers. Okay, so down is just, I think, a pathway back down if somebody wants items. But this should be the exit. There's a really annoying bull claw here. I don't like this spawn because it's hard to target. So I just like hope that I can freeze it before it does anything bad. And again, I'm really happy that they make sure the bulk haul drops are inbounds. It's always nice. Chipping out the Del Saber there. Perish. on heavenly arms i believe in you hopefully one of us gets it or one of the ultra rares one of the above i'm gonna say no to this oh i got knocked down randomly that sucks so much damage okay now i'm gonna pick this up because i think we need this to advance the plot That'll put a teleport down, which I'm going to use. And I th think we have to hand this to somebody to go to the next floor. 
who did we have to hand it to is the question. Let me restock and then we'll we'll figure it out. They're in the Hunter Guild, nice, nice. Rip all my money, by the way. Give it a salute. You died for the showcase of uh, new quests. So, Valiant Frame. I'll put away the Del Saber left arms in case they end up being used by anything later. Then we can also hold more items. So we'll do just the second floor. The second floor has this weird bomb mechanic. I vaguely recall where we have to go, but basically it's a big panic to just find things. And honestly, if we time out at that portion, it doesn't really matter. As long as we get a lot of kills before we activate the cutscene, we should be fine. I think I said yes there. So it should allow us to go to Ruins 2 now. Nice. Wait for the group to catch up to us. You might all have to talk to him. Oh, maybe. <laughs> if you don't hand it to him, it's proof you haven't gone there. for Murphy. I'll do some figure eights in the meantime. Oh, look at that spin. There we go. That's a maritime. He's being weird. Did you... Do other players have to interact with the capsule? I don't, I don't really recall. It's been a while since I did this multiplayer. Yeah, maybe Murphy, you didn't... Yeah, maybe you didn't pick up the capsule. If you just left without touching it, that might be why. I'm not even sure which one of our telepipes is closer, to be honest. Because I didn't telepipe out of there. Let's feed some souls while we're waiting. Hmm. Ooh, only 441,000 more to level. That's not too bad. So we have, I think, two more quests planned for Yellow ID. I'm gonna do just a generic boss run and then... something desert related, maybe? Oh, this song is definitely going to get on my nerves. How long is this? Only 35 seconds? That's fine. We'll skip forward. No thanks. Those like eight notes repeat songs drive me crazy. Yeah, unfortunate we've learned now that everybody must touch the capsule. I'm so used to quitting out when I see capsule. No, I, I think we've done it as multiplayer twice on stream before, and that's the most I've ever done multiplayer with that quest. So uh, it's something. Yeah, you eventually just have to go to the northwest of the map. As long as you go to the northwest, you're fine. So if you're in like that L-shaped room in the middle and you go left up, left up or something that should take you there. Because I think several of our warps were on that area. Oh well. I guess we'll know that for the future in case I want to do this just to floor two. 
rip the XP per second. It will no longer be accurate in any sense of the word. I was curious if it would go back up to like 90 or so upon completion, but not with this big of a gap. It's not going to be accurate. I'm not even sure I can go backwards since we're in ruins too. Yeah, we'll definitely change the XP for a minute for sure. to proceed. So I believe these things drop okay items. Walls are mostly pointless, but that's fine. They're mostly pointless on every ID. Get rid of these. Death Gunner drops some interesting stuff. Or Psycho 1 chances. Photon drop. Painful. Oh, I should have gone to the nurse, actually, in between, just to restock my traps. That was actually a mistake. Oh well. Goodbye, Merlins. Uh, I think we have to check out each destination at some point. Ooh, that's a lot of easy kills. <laughs> it's zap zap time. There we go. There's the zap zap. Ooh, that's going to be an annoying wave. Let me freeze this. Thank you, Freeze Traps. I would not want to do this room without them. <laughs> Although I am getting kind of low. Uh, I think that's Confused Trap time. He's still spinning circles for a little bit, which is funny. Hey, okay, dealt with him. So we have a choice of going down or not. We might as well as. At some point, one of us will trigger the bomb sequence. I think at that point, we could just stop playing. I don't think it really matters. Hopefully this will not trigger the bomb sequence. Ooh, I'm in a really big room. That's kind of scary. I can only picture terrible things happening here. Not great. I don't think I can hit all of those with one trap with where I was placed. Killed some of them, but we're gonna have to frozen shooter clean up this. Okay. Park Bringer, there we go. TP for ring. Oh, I'm definitely gonna take it then. I'm going to bail on uh, Murphy in a moment. I just want to hit this uh, Darkbringer out. And then I'm going to come right back. I'm bailing. Elcleave is yellow. I'm going to take it, then I'm immediately going to take it. Because getting, getting like 17 more traps is kind of huge. And we're going to go back to my warp. Okay. We're back, but this time we're armed. Nice little coordination there. Thank you, Helpley. And I guess, too, if the group needs buffs, we can put a telepipe near Murphy. <laughs> and be like, buff us! 
still got a bit of a minute before we gotta worry about that though. Okay, so I got a door over here. Jokes on you, Dale Sabers. Nice multi kill there. I'm gonna use a confuse trap here. I don't think I need to freeze yet. Keeps them off of me for a bit. Why they're still walking at me? Well confused sometimes. Very insulting. I'm gonna revive Murphy there. He got hit and run by a Del Saber. Nicely done. So I did find a Trifluid, so I think the team will probably need to take my telepipe. We're gonna telepipe so you can get to Murphy. take a little detour here though to come join us for the buffs as needed I think the goal is something in the upper left makes you do like random runs through the rest of the dungeon I'm mostly just interested in cool there are a, a disgusting number of dark gunners here I don't know how I feel about that We're gonna be in this room for a while. <laughs> there we go. Team trickling in. I should probably move my tele- I'll move my telepipe into this room, now that we move rooms. <clears throat> that way you have a faster exit if you need it later. Uh, just an evade material, not too bad. So I guess if you needed any purple monster kills, just look how many there are. So again, I think all of those are spread needle chances. I don't think it's the Del D for yellow that has it. Just ridiculous. So rare raid or drop raid up would be super, super good here. Let's see what's over here. And, we can, and then if Hellcleave leaves his telepipe as is, that means that Dango can use that for transportation and team can just instantly go back to the ring for more trap restore. Which is kind of funny. It does require a bit of planning to clear this in multiplayer. Single player doesn't matter as much, you just pick a path until you eventually win. It is crazy how far over we've gone and we've not really hit like the end of the dungeon yet. This place is huge. But so far, no rare drops for the team, which is a little disappointing. Haven't even seen team picking up like a lot of PDs or event eggs, despite the raw number of monsters we're killing. Oh, speaking of which. That was way overdue. So, I want to look at this area map. Like, just, just look at where we started. We're like, it's so, even zoomed out, I could barely get to it. Holy. So if you want a very long quest and you don't like resetting quests often, it, it is very intensive on ultimate because there are so many enemies but it's kind of fun in a way it's like an endurance match almost we've gone to 124,000 experience in this quest it's very silly we still have not found the room that triggers the, the countdown which is good I don't want to find that room I feel like we're getting closer to it which is a bit scary but oh yeah, if there's a power material drop, it's over. I think unless you like let people immediately know, there are so many rooms to go back into. I'm gonna say good luck at that. There are so many dark gunners, which is good for this ID because I do actually want to kill them. Also, thank you for the update so that death gunners and dark gunners also drop rares. That was not a thing apparently in regular PSO. 
baffling why they would want to do that. Oh, Guard Guardiana with 35 hit? Where the- oh, 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 where are you at? Gimme, gimme. Gimme, gimme. Get out of here, Trifluid. Yeah. I made the banner. There we go. That's a pretty good hit. Holy. <laughs> like, like, we're still going. All this for the dead end. Wow. There's not even boxes in here. What a tease. Look at this level, chat. I can't even fit it in the map. <laughs> The horizontal. Probably a bomb room. You're right. You are probably right. We're gonna have to figure out how to get here. I remember we have to take a lot of warps. It's actually best to just keep exploring as much as possible before then. Did we check what was in the room a while back? We might not have. Damn. We're gonna have to get here eventually. What I'm gonna do is... I'm gonna leave my warp where it is so we can take it later. So hopefully the team will put warps down somewhere, because we're going to have to leave wherever we're going at some point. I almost guarantee it. 35 hit. Is that good enough for Fomar to use, though? That's the question I'm asking myself. Because that is a very good item. I didn't see what its other attributes were. His big thing is he just has no accuracy. Oh, okay. Good, good, good. Because mine is, like, roughly in the middle. So we could have uh, Murphy set a warp whenever we need to go out and take our warps. Because then we can more efficiently clear this. Ooh, there's a warp there. I don't want to touch that yet. Where is... Let's keep investigating. Yeah, because Guardiana potentially can triple hit, so triple hitting a spirit shot is very powerful. But in order to do it and make it worthwhile, you typically need really, really high accuracy. Which I do have a Fomar with a uh, red ring, but I still don't think that's good enough. We'll see though. Did it come with anything else? Uh, native. <laughs> well, I guess if I just want to dunk dragon really hard. Oh, I'm going to freeze trap that. Again, this is just a ton of spread needle chances for the chat, which I'm surprised we haven't seen. There are like 90 in the quest. Falls it hits like a truck. Yeah, it's a shame it didn't come with dark. It does have an open attribute if I ever did want to sphere it, but I probably don't. It's like not quite that level. If it had, like, 10 more hit, I would have maybe thought about it. Good freeze trap. I appreciate it. So yeah, you can see, even though we, we paused and lost, like, 10 XP per second, we're still very much climbing the XP train. There should be Bringer's right arm from the... Chaos Riders. I'm gonna go left, which is another warp. Oh no, I don't want to take the warps. I don't want to know. I'm gonna let Chaco right. What's up above us? Another bomb. I think this is another bomb room if we really want to complete it. Not that we need to. I mostly just want to make sure we check as many rooms as possible. Oh, this just led to a dead end. That's interesting. Well, I believe it's time to embrace a random warp. So I don't think my warp is anywhere super useful. So I'm gonna take the left warp. I rejoin with the team some freeze drops down. I'll cleave and hunt a little bit on his own. I'm tempted to take Hellcleave's warp. <laughs> get my traps back. This is pretty brutal without dying on purpose to get traps back. 
Okay, th these four dots feels like the final room. I feel like once we go there, we're gonna trigger the sequence. It's the only door we've seen like that so far. Uh, so I'm gonna burn my I'm gonna burn my traps and then oh I see Hellcleave is over there. And I might go take Hellcleave's warp and come back. Because so I just think getting that healing circle is huge. I'm down to two freeze traps. So I have been using them very consistently, but there's just so many enemies. <laughs> Holy, there's still more. Now let's do this. Okay, I froze one of them. Ouch. I just okay. I think it's safe. I'm gonna take Hokley's warp. Hokleev is yellow. Oh, beautiful freeze traps. We're gonna leave, then we're gonna take Murphy's warp. There we go. Now we're now we're cooking again. Hmm. Elkleave was just here. There's another healing circle here? Oh. Interesting. I some we somehow dodged them. That's kind of impressive. So this should work around to the room that goes up, right? Yeah, okay, I'm understanding how this works a little better. Yeah, this is the warp I didn't want to take. Alright, so there's only a couple of unexplored paths on my map. I think otherwise I have the full map. So, does the team want me to hit the button, by the way? Because there's a button here. Nah, don't hit the button. Uh, then we'll take... Dango's more? Question mark? Indeed. I have arrived. Yeah, let's assist Hellcleave here. Lots of boxes, apparently. Oh. This is not where I thought we were gonna go with Dango's Warp. That's very interesting. Hmm. I guess this just connects back. I see where Hellcleave is. Okay. I mean, I think we're done, unless you want me to hit the button. Which, if it gives a countdown, I'm just leaving. Because I don't think it opens any new doors. It just becomes like a dash to figure out where the bomb rooms are. So I figured I'll at least take this warp to fill out the map in case I didn't go here. And let them see the third floor? Oh no. You want a taste of it. I, I do not have any interest in it. So this just puts me back here. Does <laughs> that mean we do it? That's true. Because unfortunately just doing the bomb thing is like four minutes plus, which is why I don't think it's usually worth our time. But I guess I can very gradually move forward. It's a shame we didn't open the shortcut there. Kind of unfortunate. So I could take this one. So I'm almost back to my warp. I wonder if it's worth moving my warp. Dango persisted. Yeah. We went all over for that one. Team is just collecting items that they missed now. This is this is where the massacre occurred. So yeah, we're done. So we could go back to that one room. My warp should be around here somewhere. 
I think I never checked what was in this door. What was in this door? Oh, just another warp? Oh no, where does this even take you? Oh. What's... What's the point of that? Oh, okay. Question mark. Well, I guess I completed the map, technically. I'm a cartographer. Oh, is there a bomb there? I'm gonna take my warp out and not take it back. I'm gonna take Murphy's warp, and that should put me close to the bomb, if I remember correctly. I think this is closer, unless Murphy moved his. Okay, so I'm so I'm where the bomb is, <laughs> or the the start of the things. So I will hit the switch. Error. This is a dummy switch starting Murphy's self defense. Okay, you have seven minutes, chat. Good luck. I will just gradually go through and sweep what's near me. I think this is the healing circle, yeah. Button finding adventures, exactly. So we'll definitely take Murphy's Morph work when we're done, because we could go back there. I don't think there's anything else here. I'm just gonna slowly go through the dungeon. We happen to clear it, it's fine. I'll take the bottom door here, because I never checked down here. So as long as the team is in the beginning of the dungeon, I think we're fine. Because I'm pretty deep in the dungeon. So yeah, maybe there's something here. No, just boxes. And I'll take the Mesetta. I'm not in a rush. So anyway, there's one bomb I think where green is currently. Otherwise, I think they're all at the beginning of the dungeon. Dango got it. Nice. So Dango will check that door. That was a warp. So I think all the ones near me are done. I don't think there's anything left for me to do. Unless I want to go back to the beginning of the dungeon. I could take the warp to end up back where I was before. See, so yeah, there's two left. So they must be at the beginning somewhere. They're definitely not up, and I went in a big loop. So I could take a warp from one of your teams, I guess. I could take Dang not Dango's, I could take Burphy's warp. One might be in the big room. I'm thinking so. I think it is. It's like up on the pedestal or something stupid. I think I can make my way towards that, I think. I think I have to go right here. I'll go towards the big room. Alright, so team hit the, the one in, that's in here. I'm gonna go towards the big room. Just to rule that out. Look at that, teamwork. Woo! Fine. We'll show for the for the last time on stream ever. I don't ever plan on doing this again. I hate this part of the game. But I don't mind clearing up to that point. So definitely don't do this. <laughs> Recommendation if you want to do the quest, don't do this. A big waste of time. And yeah, there might be a bomb up on one of these. Yeah, there is. Okay. I found the last one. So now we just need to go... Somebody needs to take a warp back to uh, Murphy's warp. Murphy's warp has the uh, is closest to the door. Otherwise, just take the door. That should end it. I managed to find my own warp. I feel so proud. I did it. <laughs> I went the wrong way, but I did it. There we go. Three minutes left. Ooh, tight timer. Ah, uh, there is a capsule over here, it, it appears. Okay, so Murphy takes his own warp back. He should be good. 
or a green TP, that works. Okay, so we'll identify this up to 35 hit. Shana came with native and not like dark, but that's fine. Let's make sure we don't mistech this. Nice, 35 hit. Check the stores, question life choices. Can't believe this character is almost leveled again on stream. What a brutal quest. Put Guardiana away so I don't lose it. Take money from the bank because I learned so much doing this quest. 6k from 193, nice, nice. So yeah, we'll do a couple episode 4 and that'll wrap up for Yellow ID, then we'll switch characters. So I've been playing cast forever, don't want to burn out on them. Okay. Fine, I'll tell them we can keep searching. Uh-oh. How Cleave left. Damn, How Cleave was like, nah, I'm done. <laughs> Damn, How Cleave. The abandonment. Fine, I'll show the gimmick and then I'm leaving. Where is it? I don't think the gimmick has happened yet. Yeah, I think it's like I enter the hallway and then the BS happens. So in theory, I guess if you were really bored and wanted to kill Deldies, which I don't recommend, you could go this far. I mean... I'm here, I might as well go for Psycho Wand. That's how I view this. Rip all these enemies. I was gonna say, I'm not waiting for Murphy on this one. I'm going in. I don't care what my buffs are. I plan on bailing. Here we go. You're caught 10 times, you fail the quest. Welcome to BS. Here it comes. Where is it? It comes in weird intervals. Do you just have to kind of face tank? I hope it doesn't hit you. <laughs> Dango experiencing it for the first time. Yeah, you, you, you cannot move. If you move, you lose. It's that simple. Just don't move. It's easy. See how they're moving in while I'm attacking? Imagine being a shotgunner and I can't even combo. Welcome to the gimmick. Tons of fun. All right. Anyway, I now can't play the game because the spirit orbs are out. I, I literally just can't play the game. It's just so dumb. This gimmick is so bad. But anyway, I plan on bailing soon. I just want to showcase a little bit. You basically play red light, green light the whole time. It never turns off. It's at a set interval. So you get to play the game briefly, and then the game is like, nah, you're not playing anymore. Abandoned by Murphy. Please don't get me. Almost. It's just like, when you start adding in like, the death lasers and everything else, it's basically unplayable. So I'm gonna kill this room and then I'm out. I'm not going any further. This gimmick is terrible. Nice job leveling. We did it. We did it in this terrible, terrible portion of the quest. So I could do like one combo at most and then just hope I don't get hit. We done with the room? Oh, well, there's a little more. At least I can freeze trap without doing an animation. That's like the only plus side of what we're experiencing. So at least if I freeze them, it gives Dango an opportunity to not get snatched. But I think we'll embrace the ghosts and quit. There we go. 
We're officially done. <laughs> I'm not going further. This quest, this quest finale is terrible. It's very gimmicky. Chat knows how I feel about gimmicks. I'm out. <laughs> but anyway, the first two parts are mostly fine. Up until the, the bomb thing that just wastes a million minutes. Uh, so yeah, we'll round out with a couple episode four, and that'll be it with the yellow ID. That was a good quest up until the bomb bit. Yeah, like it's it. There's a pretty good density. There's a lot of teamwork that can happen that makes the quest really fast. And it's definitely a quest that's like kind of interesting to route out because there's so many rooms. There is a bit of randomness to the first quest, which is unfortunate, but everything else is kind of fun. I still recommend that quest for like deep parts. If nothing else, learn it for deep parts. What a quest. Murphy says last one, I think I need some sleep. No problem. We'll give Hell Cleave a minute or so. He said he's just doing a trade. Then we'll have potentially some free slots. So let's see, what quests would I recommend for Yellow ID Episode 4? Honestly, just the standard boss quest is probably good enough. RBR is okay, but you really want to try to take advantage of Million and Kondryu. Well, thank you for the good luck and parameter. Also, happy VIP to you. You have been promoted, as, as has Dango. Yep. You know what? Let's give her a fee as well. I got a couple. Big supporters of the stream. There you go. You're all VIPs. I think you have less restrictions on the permits now. Okay, so we'll do standard boss quests because it's it's worth learning as all characters. Almost every ID is good here. Green ID, red ID, it's, it's so good. So get ready for an, a massive amount of experience. So I just want to make sure I have something to deal with the boss. Cannon Rouge is probably fine or Charge Arm. Usually I'm a force on this quest, so this is kind of funny being on the cast end of things. But oh yeah, this character has put in the work. So it's very likely by Friday he's going to hit 179. But I'm probably not going to play him for the rest of the night. I like playing him, but I do like variety. What a raw moral for this. It is even beat. Did you want to restart, Hopefully, I don't mind. We're in the beginning room. It doesn't really matter. Get rid of these. Because we'll probably need a sort of spellcaster, because I know Murphy's going to sleep. So if nothing else, Pew Pew Laser will be good enough. And if anybody wants to take uh, Murphy's spot after that, please let us know. Ooh, another luck material. Love to see that. Anyway, I, I guess I'll deal with the enemies. Well, do I have a melee weapon? I do not. Hmm. I mean, I could just stand behind them and blow their brains out with, uh, <laughs> what's it called? Charge arm. It's fine. I'll pick something up as we go. Freeze trap is also my friend. I get to cheat a little. If I see those, I just freeze trap. Or I could just spam fire traps, which is funny. It's not a bad idea, honestly. It is just free damage.
Nice paralysis, GG. Yeah, I'm just gonna believe in Murphy to kill the satellite lizards. I'm not gonna bother. I'm gonna take care of everything else. Nice. Goodbye. I can also confuse Trap if I want. I mean, it's not like I'm not doing nothing. There we go. Shooting him from behind. It's always nice when they don't pay attention to me. Goodbye, Zeus. You're my real target. See that? We call that creative aiming. Oh, and I hit the Astark behind him. That was so sick. Anyway, I'm gonna get hit by the dwarf on here, I think. Oh, no, stop by the Gafoe. That laser clipped me. Oh, that was so sad. That was so sad. Goodbye, Dorfon. Yeah, just start to finish. This quest is really good for a uh, really good amount of Babudas, which tend to have things like Cannon Rouge on Red ID. Uh, they're kind of the bane of the force. The force really hates dealing with them. They interrupt your combos. They don't take fire damage. Uh, Rappies are everybody's best friend. There are tons of guaranteed items and relatively easy to kill. So you just pull out your favorite gun and just start blasting. Honestly, with the Confused Trap, they have such high ATP, they basically like three-shot each other. So I'm going to use my uh, Charge Vulcan to delete Astarks, which are also a bit slower for other people to kill. So as long as they take out the big threats there, I'm gonna let the hunters kind of clean things up. And or hell cleave. <laughs> gonna throw out some fire traps here, it's better than nothing. So it should be two Astarks on either, or one on either side, I mean. Yeah. And we're gonna get up to the infamous Babuda wave. This is like if you were playing Red ID and you wanted Lava's Cannon, this is like the dream wave. Everybody else is like the nightmare wave. There's so many annoying enemies that can potentially stun lock you. So we're just gonna do our best to do stuff. Change of fortune. What is today's fortune? Oh, he doesn't have it. I'll have to set that up. Goodbye. Let's confuse trap into fire trap here for more damage. Oh, just rangers. Shot that thing in the back of the head, because I could. Yeah, between me and Hellcleave, we're just gonna gun down all those zoos. So yeah, I could pick up a melee weapon as I go through, but again, you could be kind of creative with how you approach these things. Well, that Dorpon is instantly dead. Love to see it. Soundtrack finally paused. It was going strong for a while. We're in the hurry up music. Click that so I can read chat. Ooh, there we go. Nice, nice, nice. Oh, I think I'm gonna freeze this. Just so it doesn't interrupt our fireball stacking. Goodbye, Zoo. So anyway, my goal is to just output as much DPS as possible with Vulcans. When able, charge arm. And again, if it comes down to like a single enemy like this, I just get behind them and Vulcan them. So there are counterplay to range attacks with it. You just can't shotgun willy-nilly, but you can still use ranged weapons in the always. People that are like, oh, end all be all unplayable. Like, eh, just play around it, it's fine. 
So I don't like need need a melee weapon. It helps a little bit if I want to do groups. But given how the team comp is, I don't think it really matters if I do groups. Where's the zoo? Oh, it flew over there. Perish. So see how that's targeting another player? Just annihilated it. So we're about to group up in a moment because we know that after the Astark wave is a group of dwarf bonds. I'm gonna slowly make my way over here. Otherwise, if we don't do this, we're gonna pull them very awkwardly. So I need the team to come over. Uh oh. Alright, so let's Frozen Shooter him. The reason we do this is so that we can get a really nice Paralysis going, or like really, really, really good Gafoe stacks. See how they didn't hit us? So we get free reign on all their health bars here. So we have some Paralysis going, thanks to, I think, Hellcleave. So thank you, Hellcleave. I'm just gonna output a lot of damage with Charge, since I'm more likely to do damage with the Charge moves than other players. So I'll just clean it up. Get dolls, not too bad. Uh, don't need these. Underground, uh, Murphy's gonna keep us safe with a lot of fireballs, since essentially we just want to make sure we never have to deal with Marissa. So I'll try to point out the Marissa wave, but more often than not, Kafoe is the right answer anyway. But just for people that haven't seen it before, just be aware. Like, I think the rule of thumb is if you see the zoos here, you know the Marissa wave is coming in the first room. So we'll deal with these enemies, which are not very force friendly. Oh, look at that damage, goodbye. And once we see those birds, or if he's just gonna ignore them, we're gonna kill them. Nice, nice Gafoe stack, love to see it. I'm gonna confuse trap here. The way they stop targeting me and I can start shooting them. See that? Confused Trap has its own purposes, like that. Let's speed it up a little. Hmm. Let's try to protect Murphy here. There's a lot of bad enemies here. Kill one. Ah, uh, here comes the wave. So Murphy could just ignore these. We're just gonna... We're gonna take care of them for him. Here it comes. This wave is so bad without Gafoe's stack. Gafoe not only slows them, but potentially, depending on what weapon you have equipped, can lead to one-shots. So, like, for example, a Faux Newman, bare hand casting with the Gafoe Merge and Ignition Cloak, can do approximately 80% of their health with a perfect stack, to the point where if he casts one more time, they die. So your equipment does matter a lot for this. It's not the end of the world if it doesn't one shot. Just the fact that the fireballs are out at all is huge. Like it saves so much time. The Marissas are super bad if they get out of control because they freeze the group, they interrupt combos, they like body slam and jump over attacks. They're just kind of nuisances. So I'm gonna do my best to burst them like that. Nicely done. I still love how much XP this character has gained. Alright, so I'm never gonna enter this room first because I don't have Gafoe. So we're gonna let the Force do my favorite room in the game. So if they just walk up Rebarda and then afterwards there's a two Goron detonator on either side kind of thing. That works. Then he can maybe get the debuff. This one's a little tricky. If you're not in the center of the room, you can't get the debuff. After this, it is guaranteed Marissa's, so he can just go back to Gafoe stacking once there's like one left. Because otherwise we don't really need them. Because we know the Marissa's are going to be in the middle of the room. There's such bad news. There we go. One, one Gafoe is good enough to work with this. Because that interrupts the zoos, it interrupts the Marissa's. It just lets us have fun. Otherwise, you go into absolute sad panic land. And the best part is if Murphy maintains the middle position, we know there's going to be a group of Rappies that appear later. I forget the exact spawn when they appear, but if he's still stacking roughly in the middle of the screen, he should just insta-kill them by himself. Oops, rip Murphy. 
think it might be maybe after this wave? It's before Gurabulu by like a two waves, I think. Oops, can't aim that high. Where is the zoo? There we go. Hmm. So he's just gonna assert dominance all over the middle here, and then I think it's basically GG for them. So I'm gonna use a confuse trap here so that way I can aim at them with the shotgun. So the I guess I guess that hasn't really been talked about before, so Mur yeah, so Murphy's already in the middle. This should do insane damage, yep. Nice, nice. Oh, I should probably deal with the zoo. Put yourself. Gurdabulu less important. Never mind. Aiming aiming bad. We'll let Hellcleave take care of that. Okay, so I'm gonna try to stand as far away as possible, but I do want these Rappy items. Let's see if this works. Okay. There were a couple of interesting items, but not. Just okay. I'm gonna try to pick up Trifluids next time I get a chance. So anyway, Hellcleave is Hell Scything them, which is convenient because now I can stand behind them and shoot them because they're targeting him. That's also the perks of coming in late to a room. You can just do stuff like this with shotgun. For all the people complaining, you can't use gun. This is another one where I think it goes double zoo into Marissa's, but I think after this wave, sadly isn't one where it matters as much. I think it trolls you with like ice enemies in the middle after this wave. Yeah. But as long as it keeps pumping after this one, it should be good. So when in doubt, just Kapoe. Try to keep him alive. Run detonator does the same damage. Yeah, that's good enough. If I back up more, I can deal with the zoo. Nice. Oh. I think this'll work. There we go, I got a couple headshots there. Nice, Kapoe stacking was real. Let's protect him a little bit with some shotgun blasts. See, their leap in the air doesn't really work against Gafoe, which is nice. I think I'm gonna use a freeze trap here. I think there's just too many enemies. I'm saving them for a little later, but I, I should probably burn a couple more. At least like four. Okay, got the one that I wanted to freeze. And I froze the other one? Oh, okay, that's called a. Uh, that's called perfect in my book. Now I have 14 freeze traps. I probably could have burned down to 11 or so. I'm going to be burning basically every single wave possible here. There are quite a few waves here, and some of them might need a double freeze trap. This will just make my life easier as the ranger. That way team can just Gafoe spam in peace. Ooh, it only hit one of them. I thought it was close enough to hit all of them. Oh well. Uh, I think on this wave I might just confuse so I can actually shoot them. Again, I'm hitting them from the side because they're not focusing me. Love that little tech too. Little freeze trap here. I'm not dealing with them. So yeah, I could have burned, I think, a couple more in the previous room. This is another good example where I could just freeze trap a few. Just make our lives easy. They just should just explode to Gafoe. Yeah. And again, if I have spare freeze traps here, I'm just gonna blow them constantly. I have no reason to hold them anymore. The last wave of importance has passed. So again, that Goron Detonator being shut down is pretty huge. So if I need to, I can freeze trap these, but yeah. I regret not using a couple more in the previous room, but otherwise I think I'm mostly happy with my trap usage. Oh, I get Cannon Rouge you, actually. Cannon Rouge is, like, stupid strong. <laughs> like, once I get to Lord, it does, like, really silly damage. You can just look at the damage. Just... <laughs> 
<laughs> so I don't have like the proper weapon for that, but Camera Rouge doesn't care. Does this have dark percentage too? It does. So ironically, it's actually decent against that enemy, despite not being what I should probably use. Um. Sadly, no more Trifluids drop. Let me feed Star Atomizer to this. Fix my Synchro. So my goal here is to probably equip Heaven Striker and try to get an easy target here. So we either get Galatine if it's the normal boss, or we'll get a uh, Daylight Scar if it's the rare boss. It's the rare boss. Okay. <laughs> what? One in eight chat. Shrug your shoulders. <laughs> Or is it 1 in 10 normal? It might be 1 in 10 and then 1 in 8 with the other one. But I'll still take it either way. I'll double check his odds later. You know what's not looking good for him though with the odds? Him surviving this sacrifice. Goodbye. Okay, it's charge arm time. I have enough to uh, use Dolphin too. So this should be really brutal potentially. Charge Arm can very easily hit at a distance, so I'm not super worried about the boss. In theory, I could Cannon Rouge this boss if I have strong enough Cannon Rouge. Or if I had Pew Pew Laser, Pew Pew Laser would reign supreme here. I'm thinking of disrespecting this boss with a uh, Dolphin. So if anybody wants to donate, just get ready to donate. So I will experiment with Cannon Rouge a little. Yeah, my evasion's okay-ish. My synchro's okay-ish. Right, I'm definitely close enough, and he's not doing an attack that really matters. We didn't get, like, a big team buff here, but... I did very much get in range of this target. I don't care if you pull backwards. Yeah, there we go. Seriously, he pulled the spinner up right there. Really? What a jerk. Yeah, I'm gonna need some heals, I think. Unfortunately, I did miss one shot. That's a bit unfortunate. The downside about ATP is the crits, so the crits will leave me a little lopsided. Unfortunate. Oop, I got bodied. It's almost like I wish I could turn off crits. Team might be able to pop the other one. Even if he stays there, it shouldn't really matter. I'm gonna go back in the hole, in case he comes back up. Oh, he didn't come back towards me. Where did he go? Oh, damn, he went far left. That's unfortunate. Yeah, so the only downside is just critting with it. I almost wish I could turn crits off. <laughs> Because I crit one of them, and it caused them to become very weak, and the others were mostly fine. Yeah. It's fine. We should be able to take care of this with Heaven Striker. Oh, I'm so dead, by the way. <gasps> that knocks down? Oh, I didn't get enough health? Oh, I love it. Low health for the win. If I'd raised my health higher, I would have died to that, by the way, chat. True story. Okay. We're good. Thanks for the deal. He's coming your way. You're ready to win. So let's see. Will someone randomly get Daylight Scar? Well, can someone get Daylight Scar with hit? That would be so sick. I believe in you, team. This, I think this is a GG deletion. Oh, no. Not deletion of teammates. That's not what I meant by that. Uh oh. The boss almost fell on me. <laughs> that would have been a hilarious way to game over. <laughs> oh! Oh, Hellcleave got the wiggle! Oh, the wiggle! Nice! Assert dominance with the wiggle. That happens if you get hit right as the boss dies. You can move during the cutscene. Daylight Scar! No hit percentage, though, sadly. We'll still take it. Game with uh, A Beast. So there we go, just casually getting, you know, conjure you and first try Daylight Scar. It's fine. I would like to point out, I officially got Daylight Scar before Galatine. <laughs> Despite how many RTs we've done. Oh man. Oh, you're giving him the Daylight Scar all zero? Nice. Aw. Oh, it's a pretty strong weapon. 
The fact that it can Berserk is kind of bonkers. I think this would be pretty fun to use on the Hugh Seal, honestly. Because her animation is really good. And then on top of that, she just needs roll damage. Yeah, Hugh Cassiel, I think it's like her dream item. I'll put this away. Yeah, and then you could give him the caliber. Nice, nice. Thank you for playing with us, Murphy. We appreciate it. Hopefully you get rest if you need it. So we have... How many materials and stuff in the bag? Just do a quick check. We're back up this... I feel like I was at 80 photon drops, then I gave Hellcleave like 21, and we're back up to 75. So... I would say we're doing pretty good today. If I went up that many. I'm gonna go ahead and restock and then we'll do one more yellow. And then I think Murphy will leave, so that will leave us without a force. But Pew Pew Laser should still be in effect. We're in 54. And then uh, I'm not sure if somebody wants to hop in. But we have an open slot after this. And by after this, I mean when I hand this in. Let's see, what would I recommend? What would be like the quest to recommend? Like honestly, I feel it's usually just bosses. There's no fourth I could pop into shift ban first. Possibly, that would be kind. But I just think we would need to be able to clear the quest. Um, I'm just trying to think what fourth quest I would recommend. I mean, I definitely like the Galatine Daylight Scar option. We saw the Daylight Scar. Is there anything else I want to hover in their other one? Yeah, it's going to be episode four. I'm just deciding which quest specifically. Um, I mean, I guess we could just do pod real quick. Pod's not a very long quest. I think that's nice and simple. I mean, if all you're looking to do is Daylight Scar Bonds, I think that makes sense. Sam, my XP is pretty close to leveling. Even if I don't level today, it's fun. We put in more than three hours of work on this character. Barely a level away from Red Ring, which is awesome. So last call for people to come in before Murphy just pops by with the ship to deep in. Hopefully he's gonna run Marl. Nice, nice. We're still in even B territory, which is good. Then I think after that we're gonna take a short break. But yeah, we've been grinding it out for yellow ID. Oh, hold on chat. We got an important message. I think it's time to alleviate someone of their Twitch addiction. This person has been detected in 4,336 channels, and they were last seen in 999 different games. So let, let's help them with their Twitch addiction. <laughs> They're definitely a real person and say goodbye to Lonely E-Girl. A very real, very real account. By the way, I did get the Gurren the other week and to make the Jazai, but I didn't know it hit, so I'm kind of sitting on either Gurren or Shurn or another Gurren. Mm, I was in that, I was in that decisive state too. I think the problem is like there's there's not a lot of like Shuren runs are okay. I think Gurren, if it's not your primary, has some really interesting ult rares, a little more than caves. I think that was the general consensus of the chat. Okay. So I don't see anybody else volunteering for the fourth position. So we'll get started in a moment. Yeah, I don't see anybody else, which is a shame. So it's a free carry. <laughs> Exactly, it's the Crimson Assassins, essentially. Oh, thank you, Murphy, for sticking around to at least give the initial buff. So we'll do some pod after this. The only downside to pod is that everybody needs the quest.
Yeah, I think there were some decent Shuren IDs. I just, I would have to double check the list. I, there is a uh, massive attack that you could do that has all of them. I'm just checking this out real quick. Uh, might have been White ID. I think White ID was probably the strongest. Oh, Cleve saying he still doesn't use it. Just is okay. I think the problem is just like there's so many other endgame rares that are not as hard to assemble. Thank you for the buffs. We've been blessed by Murphy. Oh, he's facing me, so I can't hit him. That is so sad. Would have been an easy, easy kill. Take that, Satellite Lizard. I don't care if you have range resistance. Get frozen. So I guess it's fun showing that you don't need to always bring a melee weapon. It's recommended, don't get me wrong, but sometimes you can just do this anyway and kill nearly everything. GG. Yeah, White ID, for example, gets Shuren, Red Handgun, Ejido 1975, Red Sword, Caduceus. So pretty much no matter what you do that gives Crimson Assassin, at least there's ult rares you could go for. So it's kind of like a, if you'd like an Ejido kind of thing, it's not too bad. And again, if you don't have Red Handguns, it's also not too bad. I think that was my only recommendation. The other ones are just, they don't really have like any super endgame rares. Like, Viridian is probably the next best, if I remember correctly, but White ID is definitely the strongest for that hunt. I originally was going to do a White ID Ranger for it, and then I was like, uh, I just don't really have a need for it. I ended up giving away my Jizai to uh, Chris, actually. I don't think I have one anymore, unless I made a second one and forgot. Honestly, it's not an item I use very often. I'm with Hellcleave. It's not as game-changing as, like, Dark Flow is, and trying to find space for your weapons is kind of annoying. I'm let help me pew pew. I'm gonna go to the right side first, because I think it has less things that I can't deal with. Checkmate on the Astark. It's an episode 2 or 4 weapon, definitely fair. I think I want to try Daylight Scar and Huka Seal, because I remember, like, leveling with her. Like, daggers are amazing, and they're better than Caliber with her, because their sword animations are kind of eh. So it's nice that there's actually, like, a strong, berserk, decent ATP weapon. I think that technically also gives her access to like a non-challenge mode weapon because there is one where if you complete it it allows some lore I think but it's like very low level so it'll never be used over S rank sadly there's like the very rare version but it's upstaged by daylight scar is how it's described in its own item description it's kind of sad People favor this because it's easier to get hit percentages on Daylight Scar, blah, 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 blah. So even though it technically is more ATP than Daylight Scar, it's not as easy to get. So yeah, that would be my recommendation if you're going to do that, just because at least, at least you could say you're doing like an actual uber hunt. Sure, and drop rate from Grass Assassins are okay. I think it was like one of the beginning caves massive attacks has the most grass assassins if I recall offhand correctly. It's not like anything like ultra crazy, it's just a standard quest. It's not like episode 2 where it's like you pray for cookie quests if you want to get enough clears. Like there, there's enough that you don't really need it. Ouch. Lasered again. So sad.
Thank you for the heal. Oh, I should have kept walking forward. Okay, so Pew Pew Laser slash Rafoe can deal with these boxes. I'm gonna walk over here just to get the items. I'm not gonna try to open them. Rafoe destroys so many here. Yeah, there we go. It's so beautiful. That's like one of the most satisfying box opening in the game. Just like, kaboom. You're like, I, Ramar, I, Humar, finally. You do something very efficient. Just boom. Boxes be gone. So surprisingly, we're almost done with the quest for people that have not seen it before. We have like one more surface level to go. Yeah, I'd like to think that the Humar and Ramar have spells, not for damage, but purely for falls, final phase, and opening boxes. Do Kamui, thank you. I could not remember its exact name. But I did remember it as a lore. I said level 6, it was level 5. It was pretty close. It's not worth getting for the special. I just find it kind of hilarious. It is literally described as it's not worth getting. <laughs> like in its own description. It is one of the saddest item descriptions I've ever seen in Affinia Wiki. Like imagine just being told, yeah, you're not worth getting. Like, yeah, you're ultra rare, but you're bad. Sucks to be that spell. Oh, did we finally clear the soundtrack? Wow. Uh, I was not expecting that. One second. I thought we had at least one more quest to go. Let chat pew pew laser for a bit. <laughs> Excuse me. Murphy quoting that. More like ultra rarely used, damn. That wild dango. Yeah, it's very annoying to get, because you gotta do the the well, you have to make the Kamui's, <laughs> and then it's not even done when you have it. What a ridiculous item to acquire. That's for when you're truly done and bored with the game. You go get that item. Damn, that freeze trap was so sick. Got him. Right, I'm gonna stand over here for the Dwarfong. Oops, slightly misaligned. Unfortunate. Was that a demons I just saw? That was rude. What did, what did that poor dwarf on do to you? Yeah, all the katana books is the ridiculous part. You're like, oh my gosh. I think at one point I just wanted to make Book of Katana and then never use it. But just to say that I had it, I think I still have most of the Ajitos. The problem with it is like you probably end up using Photon Crystals to get most of the Ajitos if you just don't happen to casually come across them in play. Not worth the grind otherwise. I might as well burn a couple more freeze traps. We only have one, no, two problem waves left. As long as we keep shutting down enemies, this should be fine. If I go on. Yeah. Like, imagine going through the, all that effort and it's like, that Daylight Scar I picked up will be, like, infinitely more usable in almost every scenario. That's so sad. Okay, here's the trap I never understand how to get around. I know there's a way to get around it. I've never done it successfully. Oh, there we go. Oh. Oh, you gotta hug that wall so tight. If you're even, like, one step off, you trigger it. It's very annoying. I'm not sure you could do it by going the other way. You definitely can by going the way I did. I very rarely do it, because what happens is like I'll step out and I'll go like here instead of just immediately going over and that'll detonate it. It's very silly. Okay, here's a problem enemy. Don't mind me, just do a bunch of drive-bys. Oh no, I'm in the pit. I think this is GG. No, I'm being bullied by the zoo. Get it off of me. Damn, I needed a Gafoe out there or something. I can't cross while it's out. That was a very unfortunate teleport, I'm not gonna lie. How was that not in range? That actually blew my mind just there. 
Okay, killed you. Can't shoot the Rappi. Yeah, it's like, it's so ridiculous. Like, imagine going through all the requirements to get all the Agitos and every other nonsense item at once and then be like, yeah, I don't have the challenge mode gun. Like, okay. <laughs> Just, one of these things is probably faster to get than the others. It, it's not, it's not Kamui. So anyway, we're at the boss. So, this is kind of like if you're playing Rare Enemy Week, you want to see Kondryu, who we just fought earlier. Otherwise, the payoff is you get Dragon Scales, which are pretty good for making mags. Got one Kabooey from a 5 8 gamble, damn. I'll cleave living the life on that one. Oh no, there is... There is no... There, yeah, there's there's no reason to go for it with trades either. Okay, so we got Shambered in slash Scambered in. We're getting scammed. I'm just gonna rely on Pew Pew Laser. I'll let Hulk leave, basically go there. Because I'll, I'll desync the boss very heavily with my ATP. Between the random damage range of the weapon itself, better for a Force or PP Laser to go there. That is an unfortunate spawn. I, I did my job. I went straight for the red one. GG. <laughs> I can say I worked hard on that. Sniped. <laughs> I'll speed this up slightly by approaching. Nice. So I'm basically going to hang out with Dango in the main chamber. We're going to give Hellcleave the salute. I could donate if he's got meter. But generally speaking, we're not going to have a lot of meter in general. Yeah. I'm at 78, but... Yeah, we'll let him do it. Oh, Dango actually has it. Interesting. Well, it's up to you, Dango. If you want to try risking the dolphin, it's up to you. I mean, I'll donate. The worst that happens is you whiff. But typically, if you see it reeling back for laser, you can't hit it. So you have to kind of preempt it or see it's doing another attack. So generally speaking, if I see the boss doing tornado, I just immediately pop mag blast because I know it's not going to recover in time. On the plus side, I'm health regening a lot of HP. So yeah, it's up to you. We got a long time to wait otherwise. Yeah, we can see it's got 5k health. Like, Hellcleave does damage, but Hellcleave's also gonna get knocked down a lot. Technically, if you wanted, you could just heal spam Hellcleave. I wonder if that would actually be better. Because I can't really do anything to help Hellcleave. I'm just gonna desync horribly. But in theory, <laughs> the Humar Resta to the rescue. <laughs> spam that Resta. Oh, never mind. The boss is already dead. Unless you dolphin it. I guess it would speed it up. You believe in the dolphin. I'll try to kill it with Charge Vulcan. Ooh, it's a little desync. Dolphin would save this. Oh, there we go. We donated to Hellcleave's dolphin. We're good. I love that I'm not in the same room, so I can still move around. Anyway, let, let's go prepare for this one, then. I think you're gonna be back here-ish, right? Yeah. How did that not kill? Oh, the miss, miss, miss. Game, please. 93% accuracy, my butt. <laughs> Every single special whiff there, Chad. That was painful. GG. Here we go. At least we donated to Hellcleave. That's how we can help Hellcleave. See that? I'm saluting Dango. Hellcleave's looking on in admiration. Dango's like, yeah, that's me. I'm the wild one. Say a tons of XP today. Guardian armor. I don't know about that drop. So in theory, decent weapons also drop from this boss. I think we saw like a couple of 60 hit weapons before here. I mean, it, it is the end of episode four, so at least there is a chance of them being good. Okay. So not quite enough to level, but I think that gave a very well-rounded approach to potentially some known yellow ID quests and a couple unknown ones. It gave some opinions throughout. We walked through some of them. We already know about fragments. We're not going to go into more detail there. 
finishing that quest is always a mistake, but at least we had fun with everything else. So I'm just going to check real quick for percentages. 50% heat caliber. Interesting. Nothing else of interest, though. XCOM hit percentage, it really was. Every single bullet missed in that final chain. Some of it was maybe the boss moving, but it still hurt the soul. I'm like, oh, I just need to hit twice and it'll die. Miss, 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 miss. Game over. So I guess that's it for the yellow ID. I think we covered a pretty good range of things. Hopefully for people looking to spice up a lesser used ID, those are some ideas to potentially run. So I guess I'll hand in the quest. We're gonna go on a short break. But in the meantime, I guess we'll we'll send a, have a little send off for YouTube. So I guess if you did watch to this point in the video of the VOD, hopefully you enjoyed Yellow ID. Maybe not some of the clears, as I forget some of the quests, but hopefully that gave you an idea of what to sample. Where Ultimate is very much focused on the rares that you can get. Collector 20,000 Meseta. With that, I guess we're gonna say goodbye to YouTube. So, hopefully you enjoyed it, and see you again in the next part.